hopefully in a few moments that will go live okay there we are we should now be streaming live to my twitch account so welcome to the second session of our heart of darkness star wars game titled quen station where we found our gang of reprobates having commandeered an Imperial Scout Vessel, an E9 Lorinar class Scout Vessel that had some allegedly important information on it. After commandeering the vessel, they discovered that apparently it had the location on board of a lost world in the Castellar sector where the an Imperial sort of expeditionary force had discovered a strange ore that when alloyed with certain other substances could be used to create a reliable personal stealth field. Now, obviously, this would give a huge military advantage to whichever side possesses it. After fairly brutally eliminating a lot of the crew, capturing all the scientists and like confining them into the laboratories, and press-ganging a few of the terrified engineers, they were able to limp their badly damaged ship to the nearest space station, which is the huge, almost city of Quen space station. As they limp towards it, there are huge rents in the hull of their vessel. A couple of sections have had to be closed off to prevent atmosphere leaking into space. At the helm of the vessel, we have Tycho, who is wearing a hologrammatic representation of the previous and now deceased Captain's uniform. So I'm going to ask all of my players to introduce themselves quickly and say a little bit about their character. So first of all, we'll start with Ralbach. Ralbach is a Wookiee entrepreneur that has invested a lot of money in Krellian Engineering Corporation and Krellian Masternav. He has a very complex relationship with another crew member, uh, Relatha, who is indebted to him but also hates him. He uses the code of the Wookiees as a shield to basically uh, gang press him into service to him. Um, he is a person that acts as an info broker and he sells and buys information. Okay, thank you very much. And next we will go on to Tycho. So my character's name is Tycho Madar. He is a slicer and, well, a thief really. Uh, working for the Zan Consortium, and um, he's sort of an older gentleman, graying hair, and um, well, he has some cybernetic work in his uh, sort of like brainstem, and uh, the damage there sort of leaves his like the left side of his face just sort of like. Uh, at times, this twitching into this like grimace, uh, which is maybe like half of the half the time it looks like he's really in pain, and half the time it's like he has this like shit eating grin on his face. And uh, yep, currently he is doing his best to masquerade as an imperial captain, I believe. Indeed. Okay, next we move on to Rolata, our second Wookiee. Yep, uh, my character is Rulata, who is the complex relationship previously described. Um, prior to his indebtment to Ralbach, he was a uh, sort of tribal leader, uh, or going to be. Uh, he was a respectable Wookiee, but due to <coughs> certain circumstances, he is now forced as basically this... Uh, Hitman for Ralbach, and it's really making him mad <laughs> and doesn't like it uh, and murder stuff. Okay, thank you very much. And last but by no means least, we have the Rogue Gem playing Link. Yes, yeah, so I'm playing Link, Gina, who has been incarcerated more than he has been a free man, um, which gives him incredibly rugged features and a shaved head to boot. Um, because of this as well, he's also got quite a disturbed and chaotic view of life, and he simply wants to make his own way now in the sort of semi-freedom he has, uh, doing what he wants to do best, which is cause chaos for others. Uh, but he's still kind of under arrest in that he is working for a group that is bails him out indefinitely. Okay, thank you very much. So, as your 
vessel limps its way towards Quen Station. This huge space station just filling the screen of your ship as it moves very slowly under thruster power towards it. Can I just ask, where are you all in the ship? I'm pretty much guessing that Tycho's on the bridge since he's doing all the flying. What about the rest of you? Well, I'll probably be just staring out <clears throat> into space, which I do sometimes for a rather indefinite amount of time, maybe several hours, which may be quite weird to some people. Okay, so, you, so are you on the bridge link or are you in some other area of the ship? Um, I'll just say I'm on the bridge. Yeah, why not? I'll be in quite an open area. Okay, not a problem. And what are our two... Wookiees doing whereabouts are you on the ship? Um, Relbach would be in engineering with Ten Man, and I'd have him hooked up to a readout machine checking my uh stock and CEC and master nav like a stock ticker. Okay, no problem. In that case, I am sitting over the other side of the room just filing my clothes. <laughs> okay. No problem at all. As your ship is limping its way towards Quen Station, you're looking around engineering Ralback when you hear Tin Man from behind you say, I don't mean to interrupt you, sir. Uh, yes, Tin Man. It's just I feel that I should point out that the somewhat hasty, and if you'll forgive me for saying so, lackluster repairs that have been made to the secondary mains coupling on the hyperdrive are probably due to fail in, I would estimate, no more than five minutes. Um, as I'm like looking at these uh, mountains and caverns and this line going across the screen and rubbing my brow, what uh, does that mean, Tin Man? Would you like the short version or the longer version, sir? Says your pewtical and an ever dour droid companion. Uh, the short version. Well, it's going to be very unhealthy for the, the young engineer who's standing just under the coupling over there. Uh, point taken. Um, is this uh, something we can fix in-house? Do we have to land... It's a complex repair, sir, and judging by... And he sort of cranes his head around. Judging by some of the repair work these press gang engineers have done here, I would say probably safer to do it in a, a more professional facility, sir. And I'll nod it. I'm like, I understand. Okay. And um, do I know the engineer's name? I'll say, you know, that the engineer is called Crazo. Crazo. So I'll turn around and uh, yell at him and sure he look like a madman. Uh, Crazo, let's go. Out of engineering. Uh, we need to land this thing. I don't think it's going to be safe back here soon. And I hope the droid will translate it for me. He, he, he turns to Tin Man, sort of monitoring his apparatus. The engineer, Crazo, turns around to look at you and he's like, Yeah, so I'll, I'll start throwing my hands around animate and I'll say, Tin Man, would you tell the engineer, translate for me, please? I, I really don't think it's going to matter in about five, four, three, two. And as he gets to one, there's this, <clears throat> as the coupling just above this engineer's head breaks away and a jet of scalding steam plays over this man crazo he immediately falls to the ground and starts thrashing about you can see it's like a livid burn mock across one side of his face i'll uh slowly turn to the droid and cock my head you did that on purpose didn't you you're taking it out on him because i had you do all those calculations that would be extremely unprofessional sir you learned it from that barrister yeah. We're going to have to give you another memory wipe soon, Tin Man. I can barely contain my enthusiasm, sir. <laughs> uh, and I'll uh, I'll turn to Ralata and say, 
What should we do with him? He looks pretty badly wounded. This guy's thrashing about and screaming as though he's he's fit to tear the house down. I look at Ralbach with, with, with a <clears throat> expression on my face that he knows what it means and like, uh, can I? <laughs> Oh, be my guest. My droid wants him dead too. So, no. In that case, I just pull the trigger of my uh, bowcaster that is always in my hands. I, as you lift your bowcaster up and you point it at this thrashing figure, all, all the other engineers sort of pretty quickly sort of vacate to the immediate area around this guy. There's a loud, <laughs> and he pretty quickly ceases to stop thrashing around as he becomes little more than a scorch mark on the floor of this engineering compartment at this point I'm going to ask any of you who have not rolled for your destiny if you can please do so I can say a couple of you have and have already added it on okay so let me add those on there we go lovely okay so we're going to cut away from the the two murderous Wookiees in the engineering compartment and we're going to head up to the bridge where Tycho is sat resplendent in his hologrammatic glory with Link sat next to him staring out into space or what would be space if there wasn't a giant friggin space station like filling up most of the viewport as you're heading towards it you see a small light for, for the comm system winking on and off on your dashboard Tycho uh, yeah I glanced at Link <clears throat> uh, clear my throat. I accept the. I presume it's a call. So. It is. A, a, a male and sort of fairly slightly electronic sounding voice says, "This is Quen Station Docking Authority. Please provide your ship ident and purpose of visit." Yeah, I, I glance at the dashboard. <laughs> if, if there's a, um, or would I actually know that? Like, can I just rattle them off? Yeah, I would say, given the amount of access you've had to the ship's computer system, mm. you know it's standard ident, etc. Yeah, so I I played Queen, so I'll, I'll give them all the legit data. Okay, you give them all of the, the various sort of access data in your ship's identification. Mm -hmm. The voice says, Ah, Oculus Tenebris, we weren't expecting you for another two days. Yes, well, we have had some reconfigured patrol routes here indeed our scanners are registering severe damage to your hull is there a problem oculus denebras unfortunately yeah, we were jumped by well it's clear as day uh secessionists but we managed to beat them off and now we request your resources and cooperation in refitting our vessel of course we can make our facilities available to you oculus tenebris H however how you choose to pay for your repairs is your own concern duly noted quen station if you'll please proceed to docking bay 18 oculus tenebris quen station will do <clears throat> yep and the com is terminated put it off <sighs> well, it's pretty huge that station. Indeed, as you look out, Link, you can see the top of the station almost looks like a huge city. Then below it are just ranks upon ranks of docks for medium sized ships. Below that are some strange sort of hexagonal configurations, which look as though perhaps they're built to take much larger ships. And then hanging even further below that are what appear to be large sort of power station columns, effectively. You can see lights blinking on and off on them as you go closer. Each of these powers columns, these power plants, must be almost the size of a small city to itself. Um, are there any, because, well, I, I make note of the massive docking stations down there. Uh, are there any, like, capital class ships docked or... Are they all empty? There don't appear to be any capital class ships no. docked at the moment. Right. 
Yeah, it's just mainly just, uh, and I explain myself to uh, Link as I uh, sort of twist the scanners around and uh, check what's there. It's like want to keep an eye out for Imperials because if they actually <laughs> pick us up, we are going to be dead. Well, yeah, of course. <clears throat> I don't look like an Imperial, really. That's very true. In fact, none of you look, apart from Tycho in his hologrammatic suit, none of you really <laughs> look like Imperials. Certainly the two Wookiees don't. <laughs> yeah. Right, well, uh, better make sure we keep the charade up, at least for as long as well, the docking authorities will care to look. So you're going to be... Uh, <clears throat> you have you have been field promoted. You are now a lieutenant, uh, at least until we get back to uh, command, and then we'll suss out the actual rank you will have. But you are now acting lieutenant here uh, under my command, and um, uh, the people we have in our brig are some of the. Uh, secessionist spies that we caught uh, in our engagements. And the, the Wookiees are retainers, retainers, bodyguards, or pets, pets. <clears throat> yes, you can hold the leash on that. Um, oh, yeah, cool. Yeah, and I, while, I, while we're talking in the cockpit, I'm, I'll just be steering towards the uh, docking bay. Okay. Still a snag. This is not Lieutenant Uniform. Yeah, I mean, field promotion, right? So you're actually a mechanic. And, yeah. like, I decided because you were gl glorious in battle and you fought for the Empire's glory. You know how that goes. So now you're a lieutenant, even though you're actually just a grease monkey. As you're having this conversation, Tycho, you notice that one of the, the sort of status lights, the one concerning the hyperdrive, has started flashing red on your dashboard. Uh, okay. So I, because I'm busy steering the thing, and uh, I'll just put on the, uh, like, the PA. It's like, um, this is this is the captain speaking. Oh, feels, feels good to say that. Uh, this is the captain speaking. Um, are we about to go up in a ball of, Ionized fire? I believe the word you're looking for is plasma, <laughs> sir. Comes a voice across the internal comm system. Mm. What the hell is going on in there? Well, I'm afraid to tell you that the, the rather shoddy repairs that these, uh, these biological engineers made to your systems have given out, as you might say. One of them is unfortunately <clears throat> dead because okay. of it, and I wouldn't plan on using the hyperdrive anytime soon until it's seen the inside of a fine repair shop. Okay, what is your diagnostic on whether or not I can make like the last few thousand clicks before we reach the station? Can we do that? You should be fine as long as you stick to using maneuvering thrusters, sir. <clears throat> Just let me know if you need another pair of hands. Yeah, the uh, lieutenant here is, is more than capable of fixing whatever minor problems we might have. So, oh, anyway, um, ready up. Um, we are officially an Imperial transport, well, uh, vessel anyway. And uh, we have just limped our way here from an engagement with the uh, secessionists and we are looking to refit and refuel. So do what you can. I'm very considerate of the fact that at least some of us cannot pass for Imperials, and that's fine. Your powers of perception astound me, sir. Ten mana. Feel free, feel free to just... <clears throat> and I, actually, I uh, uh, in the cockpit, I uh, reach a hand just to uh, like just close the PA, but I uh, I don't hit the button, 
because uh, I'm just like, oh, using the maneuvering thrusters, and it's a bit tricky. So I just miss uh, actually putting it offline and just go like, just space yourself, man. Tin man. Just let go. Go explore. He doesn't dignify that with a response. <laughs> Yeah, and the rest of whatever we talk about is just on the PA, unless yeah. Link does something. Okay, Tycho, you maneuver the the craft that you're on around to the docking bay. You can see it's a fairly standard configuration docking bay. It has the, the translucent blue force screen over the opening that allows ships in and out unless it's locked down. However, it keeps the atmosphere contained within the docking bay as you're sort of maneuvering towards and you see this blue translucent field getting closer and closer to your ship you can see there's a number of engineers moving around there's other small to medium sized ships a couple of sort of standard freighters already in the various docking bays you can see while the separate doors they all appear to lead into a central sort of large area presumably so they can move the engineering teams around to whoever needs the most work on their vessels the nose of your ship passes through the the blue four screen there's a momentary feeling almost like sort of static electricity in the air as the compartments you're in start passing through it and then you touch the ship down in the landing bay you feel the the landing gear go down and there's a momentary <laughs> jolt as the ship comes to a stop and with a slight sense of relief you disengage the the slightly fluctuating maneuvering thrusters yeah i uh, i switched the pa off because i think it's on uh, well i i switched it on because i think it's off and uh yeah just welcome to Quinn Station, ladies and gentlemen. Let's see what we can make of this. I hope you brought your credits. I hear they're really, really greedy in this part of the sector. And I uh, start making ready to disembark, to, to go deal with the uh, authorities, which I presume is going to be like the first thing. Okay, not a problem. You start making yourself ready to disembark. There don't appear to be any sort of jackbooted squads of stormtroopers or anything racing towards your ship. However, as you're sort of looking out of the cockpit window, Tycho, you can see a rather bored-looking man wearing a grey uniform holding a clipboard in front of him. He has a, a, a calm microphone coming out of his, the side of his head. and You can see he has some sort of metallic object fixed around the back of his head you would probably recognize it Tycho as a, a cybernetic enhancement designed to aid with information processing and memory retrieval it's fairly standard on a lot of mid-level administrators at this sort of place you can see him sort of stood in front of your vessel with his, his sort of clipboard going I would uh, go to the droids, the small one, the recon probes, mm -hmm. uh, and get there. Like they have like the remote control sort of thing, and um, start typing data. I want to send them out to scout the uh, station. Okay. Now, if uh, I remember correctly, you had four of those that you named by yes. color, didn't you? There was yeah. red, blue, green, and what was the fourth one? Uh, gray, I believe. Gray, okay, lovely. Uh, now, now I'm going to ask you how much, in terms of personality or intelligence, do these recon probes have? Obviously, they can record stuff, they're recon probes. Yeah, very little at this point. They are quite new. So, uh, plus the game doesn't, I mean, they don't really have stats or anything for themselves. Uh, yeah, that's fine. So, as much as you would like. Uh, I imagine them sort of like pets. Okay, not a problem. So are you just letting them out of the, the ship and sending them off to gather information? Yeah, and then come back in an hour or two or something. Okay, what are you asking them to gather? Just the general layout, um, 
you know, I want to get uh, an idea what sort of people are on the station, uh, what are they doing, um, anything they can do. You know, they shouldn't be too inquisitive. Like, like, won't stand for a while and look. You know, just scout ahead. Okay, not a problem. So, Ralback, as you're sort of sat in the engineering department, you watch as Relata gets out these four sort of small round metallic orbs each with a band of different colors around them and lights blinking on he he speaks to them for a few moments quietly then sort of almost like throws them up into the air at which point they hover around him for a bit sort of spinning around him in a circle then zip towards one of the holes in the ship's hull and disappear through it this is uh, the type of resourcefulness that Raubach has come to value in his thrall. <laughs> <laughs> and your four recon probe droids disappear from view outside of the ship, Relata. Okay, so how are you guys leaving the ship? Are you all just strutting down the gangplank and a bit of a swagger in your step? I would and probably heading up? follow just behind Tycho. Yeah, I'd be doing my best to impersonate a very like stuck up Imperial captain, uh, striding with my hands like, just clasped behind my back, uh, very like officially, uh, striding down the the the, the oh, well the landing plank uh, with the dry ice fog behind me. <laughs> Indeed, standard on all Imperial class vessels. So yeah. as you let the gangplank down, there is indeed a <laughs> and smoke and steam billow out of it, sort of licking around your legs as you stroll down the gangplank. As you walk off, as I say, you see this very bored looking administrator yeah. with his sort of clipboard data pad, this big metallic thing around the back of his head, small sort of com link in front of his mouth. As you walk off, he looks up at you and says, Name, please. You have the bloody name. It, it's simply a matter of procedure, sir. I've, I'm sent here to inquire after all new arrivals to Quen Station. Oh. This is irritating. This is the Oculus Tenebs. I, I meant your name, sir. I apologise for any misunderstanding. You have the manifests, sir. It's a matter of procedure, I... sir. Please, please comply. There's a reason the Empire has not moved to civilize this place. You realize this? That's not really my area of expertise, sir. I'm simply a functionary. Now, now if you'll please comply with my request. <clears throat> Very well. I'm Captain Dax Vasiri of the Oculus Tenebris. Very well, sir. It'll only take me a few moments to verify your credentials with the Imperial database. If you just wait a few moments, sir. I just I, I look over my shoulder to whoever is behind me. Just kind of oh. Rolling my eyes so hard. As the as the cold lieutenant, I would just look at you. I wouldn't move my head, but I'd just look at you with my eyes and just give a sort of a, a little nod. Oh yes, I was gonna bring out our pet as well. If he if he complied with me putting a belt around his neck. <laughs> no fucking way. <laughs> <laughs> okay, in that case, you would notice I've got quite a lot of scratch marks, or some, or like bite marks or something on my hands. Battle I'm damage. Trying to kind of trying to keep hidden. Okay, while you're trying to hide that, the functionary looks up from his data pad and then holds it out towards you, Tycho, and says, "If you'll please press your thumb onto this data pad, sir." Who boy? Um. John, would I know about this sort of thing? Like, well, given, uh, the, given the fact that he said they've got access to the Imperial database, it's a good bet. Yeah, he wants to check your fingerprints against what they have on record for Captain Dax Wasiri. Hmm. Hmm. So, is it? Does it want just like one finger, or 
It's just yeah. like a thumb. It, it's just actually to press your thumb to it. Yeah, okay. Um, Think of it as almost like the iPhone bits where you press like a finger on the yeah. fingerprint. <clears throat> yeah, I'm thinking... Could I possibly mess up my thumb behind my back in some way? Just like, just cut it up so that the uh, biometric scan just gets like messed up. It's certainly I possible. Have a question. Go ahead. I was just going to ask you, Johannes, is Tycho hmm. wearing gloves? Um, well, that would depend on like, did act the actual Dax have gloves, Yeah. No, he didn't. No. Yeah. Probably not. Okay. All right. Never mind. I was gonna yeah. try bluffing and say, "Oh, you you have you have like yeah. false hands." So never. Yeah. Mind. Yeah. But um, yeah. Hmm. Well, the problem is we went too far already. Like, if I just now throw my hands up, it's gonna be like, "Well, <laughs> good sir, you are bluffing." So um. I'm going to try and... Can I dramatically exit from the spaceship causing a commotion? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, why not? I'm, I'll certainly say that's applicable. So how do you intend to cause a commotion? Obviously the gangplank's there, you can walk down it, that's absolutely grand. What do you intend to do? Okay. You, want a, you want a fight, real upper? <laughs> Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> roll, roll down, roll down, the, and get ten man in it too. Like the three of us, just roll down in a melee. Yeah, that would be awesome. <laughs> There's just like a dust ball with like, bow. Well, maybe like not actual physical fight. I doubt I would do that with you because of the thing. So, so but... it's more a sort of show fight rather than an actual fight. You know, you're sort of tussling backwards and forwards, sort of thing. Yeah. Okay, so as you're having this discussion with the the functionary you suddenly see Tycho you suddenly see his his eyes widen slightly you made like this boom, 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 from the ramp behind you and as you sort of glance backwards you see Ralback and Ralatha sort of like struggling with each other sort of in in the great old tradition of sort of space telegraphed combat sort of wrestling with each other as they they roll down this gangplank and sort of thump into the back of okay. Link's legs at the bottom of the yeah, Link, Link suddenly got an idea, which hopefully the Wookiees will, like, realize. Basically, I'm going to try and pull at them saying, like, hey, hey, break it up, break it up, but try and, like, fall into the admin, therefore attempting to break his device, and they'll be like, oh, no, it broke. <laughs> i have to get another one. Okay, not a problem. Um, can, can you please make me a deception roll at this point in time? Yes. <clears throat> uh, the difficulty is only two because the guy's far more intent on watching like the two Wookiees thundering <laughs> down the okay. the gangplank than he is on sort of investigating you at the moment. Okay. Um... Mm, no, I don't. Okay, in that case, I'm spending a destiny point since I definitely go for the all-out intimidation more than deception. There we go. Okay. Okay, Pretty not good. a problem. So describe how you knock the device out of his hand and do your, oh no, what a shame. <clears throat> yeah, so so I'll just say like, oh, break it up, break it up, and then um, grab onto one of them, like the nearest one, and like accidentally fall into him, which will cause him to drop his device. It falls on the floor. Okay, so... Uh, so oh, oh I'm, I'm very sorry. Okay, so you sort of like, grabbing hold of Relata. The, the two of you sort of mm. stumble into this guy, knock over, knock this communications device out of his hand, at which point Relata accidentally rolls over it, and you hear a... <coughs> as it's obviously not meant to take the weight of like a full-grown Wookiee on top of its screen. At which point you're like, oh, so, so sorry about that. He, he frowns slightly and scowls and looks down and says, uh, turns back towards you, Tycho, and says... Will you please keep your animals under control? I will, of course, have to report this to the sector heads. You know, the barbarians cannot really control them, but they do have a, a certain applicability in combat. I'll take your... We have taken it, many 
do not speak over me, please. As I was saying, these beasts are magnificent in combat. They have taken many a secessionist's head. And what were you talking about again? Sorry? If you'll please input your account details, sir, in which point he actually holds his arm out towards you, presses his arm, and you see like a panel on his arm slide across to really affect you like a mm -hmm. small numerical keypad. Mm -hmm. If you'll please enter your account details here, sir, we'll debit the cost of the broken communications device directly to your account. <laughs> I just, I, uh, ooh, okay. Uh, I'm going to input um, some bullshit account that I have okay. uh, with nothing on it. <laughs> But uh, uh, maybe this is a thing that I do. Um, if you want me to have like retroactively rolled computers to yeah, make it, make uh, the the point would be that it's an account that's quite obscure, so it takes time to process, uh, which is like my way of just blah, 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 and <laughs> going away. Yeah, no problems. Make your computers are old difficulty too. Mm, yeah. Okay, so go. Okay, oh. now you've accessed many sort of bank accounts covertly for various reasons. So you just sort of dredge one of those accounts out of your memory, type in the details, at which point he retracts his arm, the panel slides back, he nods and says, Thank you very much, sir. Now, as I've said, I will need to report this incident to Sector HQ. I would be pleased to discuss this further and the actual refitting of our Imperial vessel here. Very well. I can put you in in touch with the head of our engineering department here. Although I'm afraid if you wish to speak to someone senior, the commander of Quen Station is extremely busy. And it's mm. at this point in the game, I'm actually going to do our early tide change for the game. I'm sure it won't surprise any of you guys. Now, for anyone who's watching who's not seen this before, what a tide change is, normally happens a bit later in the game, but we're doing it a bit earlier in this game. I ask the players to suggest a plot twist. We then get people in the Tides of Change Facebook group to vote on which one they prefer. And when we come back after a short break, that the one that gets the most votes is what we go forward with in the game. Now, in this case, I'm asking the players to come up with the identity of the person who actually is the overall runner, the coordinator, the controller or commander, if you will, of Quen Station. It'll then be voted on and we'll move forward with whichever one gets picked. So if I can start with Ralback. Ralback, what's your idea? Um, Ralback's idea is Rock B6. Uh, Rock is an extremely old droid that many believe was created by the ancient and now extinct Rakata. Uh, for the last hundred or so years, Rock has acted as the de facto ruler of Quen Station, and he has integrated himself into the actual station itself. So uh, his subroutines are the station subroutines. You can't tell where Rock ends and the station begins. He's basically become the station. He would rule using a group of Sorosub Zed's uh, security droids. And it's rumored that he might be a member of the Droid Liberation Front. Okay, lovely. Okay, so then, Tycho, how about your suggestion? So my suggestion is that the station is operated by uh, someone called the Prime Seeker, who is like the foremost representative of this collection of professional uh, archaeologists and uh, scavengers. And... Um, they're sort of like vaguely mythologically and or religiously motivated people who deal in uh, like old stuff, whether that's tech or just cultural relics. And they're like just going around all over the sector trying to find this uh, mysterious planet that they uh, think holds a lot of old immeasurable wealth, basically. Okay, that's absolutely great. So, Relata, what's your idea? My idea is that um, the station is run by Sarna Rade, 
aka the Crimson Queen. And she is a was an old Jedi Padawan who escaped Order 66 and joined a band of pirates and through using the force and tapping into the dark side, uh, she not only managed to survive but rose to the top of the band and became a notorious pirate. And her crew is exceptionally loyal to her, uh, as if it was something other than her force of personality at work. Okay, excellent. And last but by no means least, Link, what's your suggestion? Okay, so mine is um, Pavano Kaldros, uh, who was a semi-famous pod racer from Malastare. But in the end, he used his winnings, which were quite extortionate, to buy himself a permanent place for retirement on Quen Station. Um, and while he's kind of let himself go a bit over the years, so he can't really race anymore, um, he became quite an avid businessman. Um, and essentially, Quen Station is now a huge hive for trading, uh, for ship and speeder fanatics, um, selling parts, trading, that kind of thing. He also has his own uh, mechanics business called Caldros Repairs, um, which he, he promotes or, or, or sort of says in his slogan as being for any ship that needs fixing this side of the galaxy. Okay, great. So I'm going to post those up on the Tides of Change group now, guys. So if you guys want to grab a quick drink, take a five minute break, and we will return to the game once we've got the vote on this. So I'll see you all in a few minutes.
Okay, and for those of you who may be watching who aren't aware, we're now doing what's called a tide change. This is a mechanic suggested originally by Andre, I believe, in the Tides of Change Facebook group, where I get each of the players to suggest a plot twist, in this case, who is the mysterious ruler of Quen Station. I then post it as a poll in the Tides of Change Facebook group, which I highly recommend you check out if you're interested at all in FFG Star Wars, the RPG. We then get people to vote on it. We're in the middle of a sort of five, 10 minute break to give people a chance to do that. Once they voted, whichever option gets the most votes, that's what we take forward in the game. So this will actually determine who runs Quen Station. And a lot of the sort of flavor of the station will be based off of that. So we're gonna give people a few more minutes to vote and then we will jump back into the game. I like the way you're providing a musical interlude during the the break, man. That's all good. <laughs> yeah, for some reason I've got you've got a friend in me in my head. Oh no, no, I have so, as well. Thanks for that. Yeah, it's a good song. I just can't play the saxophone. Yeah, fair. Or, or, or something like um, friggin' what's his name? Or maybe I can. You get a friend in me. <laughs> to, to be fair, if I could play the saxophone, I'd be like busting out careless whisper all the time. Yeah. Gary Newman. Ra Ra yeah, no, no, Randy Newman, isn't it? Randy, Randy Newman, yeah, you're Randy right. Randy. 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 He calls Randy Newman. Have you ever seen uh, Randy Newman does the soundtrack for Star Wars? No. He writes a bu yeah. There's an SNL skit where they have uh, Will. S oh no, it's Mad TV. Will Sasso does a bunch of uh, Star Wars songs by Randy Newman. Wow. I bet that's really something else. Okay. Well, currently at the moment, guys, it looks like we might be on track for our first tide tide change of the. The game so that'll be interesting having two leaders of the station but if that's what we go with then that's what we go with so i'm just gonna wait for johannes to get back and then we will jump back into it okay lovely so i just post that the the voting is closed okay well, that's certainly interesting For some reason, these Facebook polls don't really update for me uh, until like half an hour after we're done voting. Yeah, sometimes they are a bit weird, to, to be honest, uh, with the refresh rates. It, it depends on the sort of the cache of your, your browser and lots of other like, tedious stuff mm. that I would go into. But yeah, mm. they, they can be a bit annoying. But okay. The, the function reads looking at you and says, of course, I, I will have to report this to the sector heads at which point he he gets on his communication device and you hear what appears to be binary 
issuing out of his mouth into the communications device, which is quite odd, seeing a biological just sort of open his mouth mm-hmm. with this, this droid-like bleeping emerging from his mouth. In response I to understand it, binary. What does he say? Indeed. Well, you hear him basically giving a report of everything that has just happened, you know, the device that's been broken. He also lists like how many credits it's going to cost to replace and that he's he's taken the, the bank details of the captain of the vessel. There are two potentially dangerous animals on board. He, 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 basically, he basically lists everything that happens. He then gets a response back in binary, although it's a very archaic sort of version of binary. If you think about it as sort of a, if the if the communications device he was using was like a sort of a PlayStation Four, then the the response you get back so is coming off like a, a ZX eighty one. That's how like old the binary is that that comes back in response, and the response simply says the Queen will not be happy about this. At which point you notice he goes a little bit pale. The rest of you just, if you don't understand binary, you just get like a string of whirs and bleeps. So are the formalities concluded now, good sir? Yes, uh, you're free to come and go in the station as you wish. Please maintain a respect for private property and our laws whilst on the station. Carrying weapons openly is prohibited unless you are authorized station personnel. Any breaking of these I growl. Rules, <laughs> he pauses while you growl and then continues saying, any breaking of these laws will lead to incarceration until sentencing can be pronounced. Yes, yes, we have been here before. We have your laws or what passes for them. Very well, sir. I've submitted your request for engineering assistance. I'm sure one of our teams will be with you as soon as that can be arranged. Is there anything else, sir? No. No. Unless you can point me to... uh, vendor or a trader that deals in uh, remote incapacitation collars for these beasts of mine i'm sure if you head up to the upper levels of quen station sir most of the the traders for tourists are situated there if it's more mechanical apparatus that you require then most of the repair shops etc are located on this level of the station near to the docking ports for your convenience have a nice day sir which when he turns on his heels and walks away once we're out of earshot i look towards tycho and say to him you owe me big time captain uh before he can answer i interject and uh instead of the Petty arguments that they are going to have. I inform them about the uh, so-called queen and the strange archaic binary uh, as the situation. Okay, so Ral, sorry, uh, Relata tells you about the the strange communications that passed between the functionary and the response he received in binary saying that the queen would not be happy i did think that was kind of strange what who is this queen yeah uh can i do knowledge underworld you can indeed make me a knowledge underworld role and since this person is incredibly well known it will only be a difficulty of one Right. Okay. So you have heard of this person known only as the Crimson Queen, who is a ruthless pirate captain who sort of became semi-legitimate when she became the, the ruler of Quen Station. Her crew 
unlike a lot of sort of freebooters and pirates who are sort of pretty much in it for themselves and will turn on their own as quickly as they will on anyone else, her crew were renowned for being fiercely loyal to her, above and beyond what you'd expect. However, as I say, she's now sort of semi-legitimate. Most of her pirating days are far behind her, as she's the legitimate ruler of Quen Station. Although, if rumours are to be believed, she occasionally, whilst not getting directly involved in pirating herself, sort of looks the other way when pirating takes place, as long as she gets her cut of the profits. Would I know about the level of bloodthirstiness <laughs> that the uh, former raiders have? Like, well, like if we get mixed up with the security here, are they just going to murder us or? Okay, well, since you got three advantages, I'm going to ask you now to come up with one thing you've heard about the Crimson Queen, which is true. Right. Um, hmm, let's see. Uh, I think there's like she's very honorable in her way, but it's it's sort of a like a barbaric justice thing that she does here. Like two men enter, one leave type of deal uh, when it comes to. Uh, uh, disagreements and that sort of thing. Okay. So, sort of like that as far as the because I was uh, talking about the the way they handle crime and disturbances here. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so I yeah. will say that uh, anyone anyone has the right to call for a trial by combat. Yes. Okay. No problem. So I'm going to say that you've heard that when it comes to criminal justice she tends to favor expediency and resolution over potentially lengthy investigations if, if it seems like there's an obvious culprit she's not likely to ask for a lengthy investigation to determine whether they are 100 percent guilty she's more likely to just dish out the punishment you've got your person they've been caught it's been resolved let's move on mm -hmm. but you right. do also know that she does have a she does have a weakness for allowing people to settle things by trial by combat, since you've heard that that's how she used to settle disputes back in her pirating days, and she's mm -hmm. carried that forwards. I think maybe I... Uh, the reason I remember this is that I heard... Like, her origin is in a trial by combat for the captainship or for like the, her, for her first ship or whatever and she just like stuck to that method ever since mm -hmm. likes likes it yeah okay so uh yeah um link um of course when we get our hands on some credits there's going to be a larger slice for you but as far as that goes um we are better off not really ticking anyone off on this station here. They are very quick to their blasters, but it's sort of a, you'll see, you'll see. We'll uh, we'll see some duels on the way. I'm also quick with my blaster too. I can't promise anything, but I'll try. Yeah, just make sure that you let them know that you're going to shoot. Then it's fine. Okay, Ralbach, whilst they're having this conversation, you're sort of looking over their shoulder, and you can see that there appears to be a very small and square-looking droid with its sort of eye sockets, if you want to call them that, set on a long pole. Th think of like Johnny Five in short circuit, and you'll sort of have a, a rough idea of what it looks like. Moving on track, slowly making its way towards your vessel. Looks like uh, somebody's getting a little bit curious of our ship. And I'll point over at him. As he points over and you stop talking, you can now hear the... of these, this droid's tracks moving across the docking bay as it makes its way towards you. Uh, can I roll to recognize uh, the purpose of the droid? You can indeed make me a mechanics roll. 
difficult to say. I just got to see what. Oh, I actually have mechanics. Nothing. <laughs> okay. You think it's maybe some sort of maintenance droid? You're not sure? It's an older model, but it checks up. <laughs> it, 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 it does look quite old and sort of like... It's obviously been repaired quite a few times, judging by the look of it. It rolls towards you, probably stops about maybe five foot away from you all. Its head looks you up and down. Then there's a slight crackling from its vocabulator on the front of it. You hear it, an oddly cheery voice say, Hello, welcome to Quen Station. Hello, how are you? I'm fine, sir. Hello. How about yourself on this fine evening? I'm not doing too bad. I'm uh, sorry other to than hear these, that, sir. Uh, you're, you're a very odd droid, aren't you? No, sir. I'm a standard G2 model maintenance droid. G2, is that, uh, is that an older model? It's a standard model, sir. Are you here to look at our ship? I'm here to facilitate your stay in this wonderful space station any way I can, sir. How may I be of assistance this evening? Well, say a Wookiee like me was looking for a place where he could get some information. Where would you go? That would depend entirely on the type of information you're after, sir. Please clarify. The less than savoury kind. I'm not sure the term less savoury is in my memory bank, sir. Please clarify. The uh, type you store in a safe. Blackmail files. Uh, dirt on people. Information people pay for. I'm afraid illegal information is not part of my programming, sir. What would we have to bypass to make it part of your programming? I'm afraid that information is not mine to disclose, sir. Attempting to tamper with one of the station's droids is an offence under the laws of Quen Station. Uh, I step closer. Uh, As you step trying closer, to it, use turn, it turns and looks at you and says, Good evening, sir. How may I help you this evening? Yeah, I'm not impressed by the primitive programming of this droid. And um, I... Yeah, I speak binary, so I try to like uh, access with the, um, <coughs> try to access the uh, what's it called the maintenance protocols of this droid. Uh, so to put it in maintenance status, so it can it stops greeting people and allows it to be tampered with. Okay, not a problem. Make me a computer's role. It's difficulty three. Okay. I would like to spend the destiny point. Mm -hmm. And a success. <laughs> okay, not a problem. Speaking in binary, you suggest that it may have a fault in its systems and that it should run a level 2 diagnostic, at which point in binary it responds, commencing diagnostic, and its head sort of lowers a little bit and it stops talking. Okay, and, and at that point, I would just like to step up to it and insert my, uh, you know, sort of uh, data pad to um, okay, now, get Okay, now, I will say before you do this, bear in mind that there are people about in this station. But a, oh, giant, right. a giant sort of walkie just like plugging into a droid is probably going to be noticed. Hmm. Given that you're sort of in the open, sort of outside. Yeah, and I'm not exactly subtle, right? No, no exactly. Uh, it, there are there are many positive aspects to Relata, and subtlety is not one of them. Let's let's wheel him onto the ship. Um. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yep, not a problem. You can easily sort of wheel him up the ramp. Um, certainly, Ralback and Ralata, the two of you, is, is a bit weighty, but the two of you will have no problem. You just sort of grab an arm each and like wheel him up the ramp onto the ship. You can still hear I'll bleeps be growling and whirs. The whole way. 
You still ain't beating words. Nothing to see here. Nothing to see here. It's got a bad motivator. Okay. At that point, can I please ask you to make me a deception roll? It's of going course. to be it's going to be difficulty four, I'm afraid, because like pretty much no one in this bay understands Wookie. <laughs> so you're sort of trying to get it across like, like head gestures and sort of growls. So can we uh, uh, combine it? Do like a uh, skilled assist? I don't see why not. Go for it. Uh, yeah, that would be definitely. I I only have two greens, so I have a green and a yellow. So take a yellow. Okay. I think I'm going to spend the last destiny point. <laughs> What's the first that could happen? Oh, that. Death. that. <laughs> Okay, not a problem, sir. With your two failure and two threat, what happens is you get about halfway up the ramp, sort of wheeling him up, going, sort of growling, like, rubbing to three here, like gesturing with your heads and sort of waving your arms about, etc. When the, the droid suddenly, its head raises slightly and then says, diagnostic complete. At which point, as it realises it's, it's being manhandled up this thing, it starts going, burp, 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 and a red light starts flashing on top of its head. I would like to make a brawl check just to like. <laughs> I'm, I'm not going to say you have to make a brawl check if you want to like damage it. You can easily do that with your strength. That's okay. fine. Now, if you want to try and do it before lots of people notice that it's setting up a big alarm, that would be a check. Yeah, that's the intention. Like okay, so that that would be more of a more of a sort of athletics check rather than a brawl. Cause it's more about your quickness of reflexes rather than. Your sure. ability to commit raw damage. It's only difficulty two. So you've got him already halfway up the ramp. Okay, so you spot this sort of red light emerging from its head and you hear the first like... And you pretty much like kick him up the rest of the ramp onto the ship. He flies up the ramp and like... Into the wall on the ship. And then sort of... Robok will immediately. I'm gonna immediately grab my comp. Ten, ten men to the, ten men to the ramp. Ten men to the ramp. I was just about to start a self-diagnostic, sir. Uh, is it important? I'm gonna need you to do some uh, translating in a hostile situation. <laughs> Very good, sir. And you hear like the boop, 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 of him starting to move. Okay, I, I as soon as I walk up, I just press the button to close the ramp. Not a problem. A couple of people have looked round as they heard the start of the siren, but having seen like nothing on the ramp as you've disappeared onto the ship, they just sort of go and carry on with their own business. Yeah. Um, I'm going to drag the droid all the way to one of the science labs where they have like a lot of uh, tools and everything. Okay, not a problem. So I'll say the convenience to say that you guys reconvene in the science lab that you've obviously had time to like fix the doors etc and get them working again what have you done with the scientists that you previously had like locked up in there well they're still there okay no i growl i growl at them if they want to start the ruckus yeah, as the door opens they're like oh. as they think oh we're finally being let out and then you storm in you're like Rrr. and they're like Rrr. and so sort of back up as far as they can as you sort of drag this damaged droid in, as you all sort of convene in the science lab, after a few moments, you see that tin man come like shuffling his way through the door. He, he looks down at the droid in a sort of very dismissive voice, say, I didn't know there were many of these things still activated. They're annoyingly chirpy. No, oh, th this one won't be chirping for a while. Say, as I like just... Uh rip out uh the power yeah you the, you reach down pull out the power pack <laughs> not a problem and uh and then i'm start to like uh rewire the um, what's it called uh, the memory banks uh so to access as much information about the station as we can from this droid including a complete map and all the passwords or anything uh, between various, uh, what's it called, 
segments of the station, as well as any useful information that can be done. I, I realize it might be a lengthy process, so. Okay, no problem. Well, make, make me a computer's role, difficulty three, and I'll also reveal that as we go on. As that's going on, Ralback Tin Man has shuffled in. He looks over at you and says, what is it you wish me to translate, sir? Well, we're about to figure out, and uh, I'll, I'll turn over to um, Link and Tycho and say, I was kind of thinking of doing something a little bit dangerous, but I want to run it by you guys first. This uh, queen that owns the station, I was thinking of maybe buying some uh, information on her, some blackmail information. John, meanwhile, can I get a blue dice from the all the science equipment? Lying around. Come. Of course, the danger is obvious. If I go what around and start asking people for... Okay, I will say that you are going to be able to get into the memory banks, but it's going to take a a lot longer than you'd expect it. You see that this, this droid, despite the fact it looks very old, the security protocols on it are actually like some bang up to date, but surprisingly efficient. So you will get through them, but it's going to take you a lot longer than you'd initially thought. Okay, can I leave it here to do its thing? Yeah. Like, I started the process and I just... Yeah, Leave it down. You've hooked up your equipment to start sort of breaking through this encryption, and you've just got to like wait for the programs to work their way through it. That's not a problem at all. Sure. So, Rollback. I have some connections with the uh, locals here. And currently, I'm undecided whether we should try to go up the metaphorical pole semi in a semi civilized way or if we should just go for the throats as you suggest well with my with my bankroll i'm sure i could buy the information i know i could get it uh, something we could use against her, but the issue will be if we get caught with it before using it to our advantage, things might not go well. Mm. Uh, I look at uh, everyone there, just glance at everyone just to secure their attention, sort of. Well, the question really is about the integrity of our cell here. The cell doesn't really require any single one of us. Do we want to try and isolate this to Ralbach here? Mm, don't see any problem with that. Only that I'd be a little bit jealous that you'd be having all the fun. It's, it's, well, not, it's not the kind of fun you'd like. <laughs> <laughs> it it would be uh, me and Tin Man, of course. I'll point at the apathetic droid. Oh, joy of joys, sir. Hey, you're always bothering me about uh, going on vacation. You want to see Quen Station, Tin Man? Well, I suppose it beats being cooped up in here, sir. <laughs> yeah, you might try and see if they have any humor modules for sale. Get one of those. Very droll, sir. Well, I mean, I'd I'd be willing to accept the risk anyways, because if if we're going to be here for any duration of time having the ship repaired, we might want to have some kind of ace in the hole in case we run afoul of this queen. Trial by mm -hmm. combat seems dubious to me at best. I'm I'm not a fighter. As you guys are having this discussion, faintly from outside your vessel you hear the unmistakable sound of blaster fire. Uh, I wonder what that could be. So uh, does it sound like it's like just down the ramp or... It sounds is... like it's just outside your ship, although it's obviously not firing at your ship because you can't hear it yeah. thumping yeah. into the hull. Okay, uh, I'm going to dart towards the cockpit to go for the, uh, like, our weapon controls what little we have 
Not a problem. You run to the cockpit, jump in and through the, the view screen out the front of your ship. You can see what appear to be four large security droids, probably of Sorosub manufacture, sort of clanking their way through the landing bay. They appear to be pursuing a small possibly a child you can't tell at this difference this distance they're dressed in sort of almost like rags that are just hanging off them they appear to be like holding something to their chest you can't see what it is but they appear to be like ducking and weaving between ships running to stay ahead of these security droids as you watch you see one of the droids go and fire a blaster it hits the ground a couple of feet behind where this small figure is running there's a yelp from the figure and it ducks behind a small ship and breaks into a run, obviously trying to make its way out of the engineering bay. They're they're shooting at a beggar? <laughs> wow. Gosh. The things have gone downhill here since I last <laughs> peeked in. Would you like me to make it gather a bit more momentum? And you can see I've already got my gun on me. I, hmm, how open are you, Link, about your damage? <laughs> like, uh, I'm assuming you mean like mental damage, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, it, it comes in waves. Sometimes he's very introverted, and other times like this, he's kind of, he's looking at that thinking, yeah, I want to get involved and stir things up some more. Right, so, uh, Either so way, you know that he's got kind of a bit of a weird thing going on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just, it's just, Tycho just like jumps into conclusions. It's just like, like taps him on the shoulder and just go like, "Yeah, go let off some steam." Ha! Huh, fantastic. And he actually like <laughs> pretty much runs down the ramp. <clears throat> okay, not a problem. You run down the ramp. As you do, you can hear these security droids like. Boop, boop, boop as they're moving their way across the, the engineering bay, fairly rapidly snapping off shots at this fleeing figure that's just about made it to one of the many doors out of the engineering bay. Hmm. Okay. I'll probably try and let off a shot towards one of the droids at the front of the group that are chasing this kid. Okay, not a problem. So you're not directly shooting at one of the droids, you're just like firing a shot in their general direction, is that correct? Yeah, yeah, basically. Okay, N no need for a roll then. Your shot hits close to one of these droids, at which point its face turns towards you. You can see it's got like a, a small sort of single sensor in the middle of its head that appears to be lit up, serving as its ocular sensors. As it turns towards you in quite a sort of loud, amplified voice, it says, Station personnel, please go about your business. <laughs> nope. Out of the shop. Okay, not a problem. At which point it it continues looking at you. The other three have sort of moved off in pursuit of this person they're after. At which point it says, "Please lay down your weapons, or you will be considered hostile." Oh, I thought I'd get that away already. Never mind. What are you doing after that kid, anyway? Maybe you should lay down your weapons before I shoot you. The phrase "kid" is not in my vocabulary. Please explain. Small, organic. We are pursuing a dangerous criminal. Please go about your business. Dangerous criminal? What? He's stolen an apple? The criminal has stolen several items of importance. Items that do not belong to the person. What? So three apples? There are no apples involved. Just seems a little odd that you're going around, what is it, six of you? Four. Four of you. Four of you are going around pursuing a young kid. We are station security. It is our job to apprehend criminals. He's a little young to be a criminal. Trust me, I know. He has stolen items that did not belong to him. That is the definition of criminal. Why do you let me go and have a look at him? You are See not station really personnel. Because you're obviously terrifying him. You are not station personnel. You are not authorised to handle dangerous criminals. 
I start I start walking off to find the kid anyway. I'm just ignoring him. Or it, rather. Okay, not a problem. What are the rest of you doing while this uh, conversation is going on? Yeah, I... Because, like, Tycho's idea was, oh, he wants to murder this beggar by himself, so... Fine, whatever. I could get some goodwill from the station security robots, but no. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's that's what uh, Tycho thinks, and uh, I think I presume we can, in some way, access like the station, like data services from the ship. Yeah, there's a publicly available data stream throughout yeah. the station. Which yeah. now, as you're a legally booked in ship, you can effectively sync your systems up with it. Yeah. Yeah, so I, I would be uh, doing that, basically just hooking up the network connections. And then, uh, I don't know, uh, I would like to do a sort of a very, like, gloss over the local news feeds. Like, what's what's going on? What's up in uh, Quen Station? Okay, you see that there are a number of stories about vandalism and thefts that have been recently committed the only sign as to who had committed them was a small sort of bit of graffiti that was often carved or sprayed onto the areas where the thefts were committed and the small bit of graffiti i will just quickly sketch out and hopefully you'll be able to see it if i hold it up to the camera but if you can see that but it looks like that yeah The, the news story you're reading is basically a station report where it's saying that all security droids have been placed on high alert with orders to detain anyone who may have links to this potential organisation. You also see that the, the ruler of Quen Station, the Crimson Queen, has placed a reward of... 1,000 credits to anyone who provides information leading to the capture of the person responsible. Um, Link, do you have a, a remote com? Um, let me just double check. Um, no, no, I don't. I only have a hollow messenger. Hmm. So you can receive holographic uh, messages, or yeah, it's how does that work? Unlike a little, a little device where the hologram comes up. Yeah. So uh, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna holo call you <laughs> from the cockpit. Okay. So there's okay. like there's like a tone from your your holo communicator, and as you hold it up, basically like a small sort of flickering blue like image of Tycho's head just appears like hovering above the holo emitter. So, what is it? It's like, okay, uh, Lieutenant, if if you haven't got the the um, urchin yet, uh, could be they're actually uh, looking for this particular or like people like him, and they're offering a bounty. So uh, please, no Whoa. murder killing on on this one. But. They, they say he's stolen something. Okay, stolen, yeah. Uh, probably, yeah, it matches up. There's sort of like vandals and, uh, I don't know, just painting some graffiti on the walls. Just catch them. Uh, there's credits in it. Okay. But I ain't hurting no kid. I know you said murder, but I'm not hurting him either. He's only a kid. He's only young. As you're um, saying you... this, Link, you actually see up ahead of you one of the security droids has caught up with the young urchin, and you see this like metal hand like clamp down on this kid's shoulder, who's like squirming frantically. The droid just, like lifts him up by its shoulder. Right. Okay. Yeah. I, I look very confused because I'm not. I'm projecting, <laughs> yeah. and uh, I'm presuming a lot about you, and I'm completely wrong, and it's just like, uh... 
Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna quickly put away the disembodied hologram of a head, um, and I'm gonna try if I can to slam into this droid. Um, desperately try not to reach for a weapon. Okay, can you please make me an athletics roll? The Yark. difficulty is going to be two. However, one of them is red. Okay. So one purple, one red. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Yep. Okay. Um, and I've also got a, a quick strike blue bonus die to con uh, yeah against opponents that haven't acted yet. Yeah, that's so. Fine. Would, would that count? That. Yep. Cool. Okay. Boom. Okay. I presume your aim is to get this droid to drop the child. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah, so I could scoop him up and run off with him. Okay, not a problem. Now, you certainly have, you sm you clatter into the, the side of this droid, at which point it releases the child and tur turns its head almost 360 degrees to like look down at you. However, obviously the child, as soon as it's released, just wants to get the hell out of there, so it's going to make a break for it and try and run off. If you want to try and like, scoop this child up and... While it's struggling mm -hmm. and get away, you need to make some sort of other role to do that. Okay. Um, let's see. I suppose some kind of agility role. Okay, so athletics and difficulty two. All right, then what's the difficulty? Just two purple this time. That's correct. Okay. Okay, yeah, not a problem. You've grabbed hold of this squirming kid who's still sort of wriggling about and trying to get free, but you've you've grabbed hold of the kid. However, All right, I'm gonna. You are try surrounded and... by like right, security cool. droids. Yeah. Um. Okay. I'm gonna essentially just try and either nip or bash through them as much as I can. Okay, not a problem. So make me. I'm afraid again it will be an athletics roll since yeah, no, it's, be, fine, it's, fine. it's all the athletics rolls. This is going to be a difficulty three, and one of those is red. So two purple, one red. Okay. I'm not pulling out a thermal detonator just yet, if I can. Um, just checking. I haven't got anything to add to that. No. Okay. Here goes. Oh, not so good. Okay, so you have failed. So what I'm going to say is as you try and break free from them, the droids have actually surrounded you and grabbed hold of you and the child. However, because you've got an advantage, you've got a little bit of time where maybe you could get a communication out or Yeah, shout I was just about something. to say if I could do that. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll just try and like maybe just press the button if I can, if my hands are being held at my side, and just shout something like some kind of bullshit code, like Captain, Captain, the the fox is in his whole mayday, mayday, you know, something rubbish like that. <laughs> okay, so because Link hasn't had time to sort of hone his communications, you all on the ship through the ship comms hear this, mayday, mayday, the fox has left the hole. Hustle negotiations are back on, Tin Man. And I'll slap him on the shoulder. He staggers forward a little bit and says, Oh, I can barely wait, sir. Ah, uh, mm, So, is it a, actually, like, do you actually project a hologram as well? Like, can I receive a hologram of whatever... <laughs> It, it would, would probably be. it would probably be a hologram of the inside of my trousers or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like I, I pull that up and it's just like static. <laughs> and it's, uh, I think you might, we you uh, might like a bit of droids like in the background, you know, like where droids move, maybe. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So I'm, I'm going to get up from the uh, cockpit and I'm going to go to Ralpak and Rulatha. Let's go. Okay. We have, we have a situation here and there's good and bad. 
the bad is uh, Link got nabbed, I presume, by the uh, security bots we saw hunting outside, shooting up some game. Um, the good news is, with Link, I presume uh, they have a bounty, which is another way for us to get at the top of the ladder, if only just to uh, go and claim the bounty and then uh, slide our own agenda in. It wouldn't hurt, though, Rollback, to have the backup if you can manage that. But I think I may need to go and handle the situation before Link gets his head caved in by the security bots. Well, uh, Tin Man and I will go with you at least part of the way. Mm. And after we after we save Link, I can access a public terminal yeah. and start flying my own craft. Very good. Yes, we uh, we will need Tin Man and his magnificent negotiation circuits to uh, deal with the bureaucracy. Tin Man looks over at you, Tycho, and then says, "You're not going to try and plug your finger into them, are you, sir?" It's a perfectly standard. Whatever. Okay. Fine. Wait, uh, Tin Man, can you start? Can you start pulling up some legal precedents for uh, for how to defend a person that attacks security droids? <laughs> of course I can, sir. I am familiar in over five thousand forms of legal communication. I knew that barrister would come in handy someday. Okay, at which point I assume you guys are all leaving the ship. Yeah. Going to look for Link. Okay, Link. Meanwhile, you and the, the, the small urchin are being sort of manhandled by these droids out of the engineering bay, and you're being marched rather roughly and efficiently down a long corridor with tubes, pipes, and wiring running down it, which heads deeper into the station. You're being herded towards what appears to be a large lift. Okay. How big are these droids? I'm assuming they're like a bit taller than me, or each of them is about six foot tall. Okay, all right, so about my height. They are they are quite spindly in their construction, though, so they're not like <laughs> like the Wookies, but they are quite tall and sort of gangly. Okay. You can see they have like white sort of armor plating on their vital circuits. All right. Um, okay. Well, at this point. Since I'm in a corridor, it's not really the best place to make an escape. So I'm going to try and, like, if I can, just whisper to the kid, like, Psst, who are you anyway? What have you stolen? The, the kid looks at you and he's like, none of your business. What, so he, like, hisses at me? Yeah, he just sort of goes, none of your business. Just trying to help. Is all right, all right. My name's Saran. What's it to you? Well, you were being chased by these lot. Not many kids get into crime that early, kid. Well, shows how much you know, doesn't it? Besides, I only borrowed a few things. Hmm. Yeah, borrowed. You got caught. That's not borrowing. Yeah, I suppose, I suppose you're right. I was going to give them back, but... Look, I've been behind bars for more than I can remember. I suggest if we get out of this that you don't keep on borrowing things. Well, normally... Normally I'd have been all right, but... but what with all the security being on high alert... I was like to know they'd nab me. Well, you got to watch out for these things. But then again, he, he kind of reminds me of the fact that everything's on high alert. So I'm going to look around if I can and try and ascertain, say, if there's like a couple of security cameras, if there's any kind of evidence that they're still on high alert or if 
things have gone down a notch. You can see sort of dotted along the corridor, there are various security cameras. However, as you're looking down, the, the lift door slides open in front of you, and a rather portly looking gentleman wearing a, a very dapper looking suit and with a, a fairly handsome looking Twi'lek woman on each of his arms so it comes bustling out of the, the lift in front of you sort of laughing and talking to these two Twi'leks as he does so as he comes out he says and then I said I won't take five credits any less for it and he carries on walking down the, the corridor towards you with these Twi'lek women who are sort of politely laughing and it's no doubt shit joke. Yeah, when, when he does that, I'm going to I'm gonna look at one of the Twi'leks and say, you must be a real tight arse, that one. One of the Twi'lek women sort of like pouts at you and chuckles and then say, well, you obviously know him better than we do. <laughs> and I kind of look away like a bit annoyed and wound up. Maybe at which point the, the sort of corpulent fellow that, who's steering them down the corridor says, come on, come on, I, I'm not paying you to talk to ne'er-do-wells and stragglers lollygagging around the corridors. Come on, my, my ship's this way. And they, they carry on past you. One of the droids sort of roughly shoves the two of you into the lift and then they file in after you. Now, Ralbach okay. and Tycho with Tin Man in tow, and Ralatha, are you going with them or? What I was going to do is that while the droid is uh, getting hacked in the ship, I have um, a communications jammer that is like a little box thingy, and I turn it on. And basically what I do is I block all incoming and outcoming uh, communications from the ship so they can't trace the droid before I leave. I just do that. Okay, not a problem. You set that up and you guys head out of the ship. You guys have just sort of like moved into the entrance to this corridor as you see this sort of like fat businessman with a Twi'lek on each arm sort of saying, oh, I'm not paying you to... Hang around talking to Ned or Wells. My ship's this way. Come on. And you watch as Link and this urchin are pushed into the elevator and the droids start filing in after them. Tin Man, ask him to hold the door. He turns his head to look at you for a few moments and then says, Hold the door, please. At which point one of the security droids turns his head around and says, identify yourself at which point you swear Ralback that you almost hear like an intake of breath or maybe a sigh from Tin Man at which point he says I am acting as a legal counsel for the two people you have in custody I'm sure if you check your no doubt minuscule legal protocols you'll find that they are entitled to representation at which point one of the security droids says confirmed Please enter the lift. And he, sort of put, I, I he puts his hand out to the door and stops. To stifle a laugh. And uh, I'll say, Tin Man, tell him we're your bondsmen. <sighs> These two people are my associates. They are my legal counsel and advisors. And I'll, I'll hold up my arm very solemnly and let out a large growl. One of the lead security droid looks the two Wookiees over and then says, Species Wookiee. And he remains sort of there with his hand on the control for the door. The door's still staying open. I believe we should enter the elevator, sir. If you insist on going. Of course, good job. Thank you, sir. And yeah, I'll I'll walk in and make sure I give the uh, the Sora Soup droids a little bit of a berth. Okay, it's getting fairly sort of crammed in the lift. It's quite a big sort of elevator, but obviously there's like you guys in there, four of these big droids, the kid and Link. So it's quite a tight fit. As you get in though, the droid releases the door control, and there's a shh as the doors slide shut and the lift starts to go down. 
Can I ask if it's just like a, a regular sort of metal lift or if it's if it's like glass or something like that? It's a regular metal lift. Okay. All right, and I guess I glare at the Wookiees and Tin Man. And like, raise my eyebrows. Ralbach will, like, nod his head very obviously and wink at you. And I sort of, I glance at the, the droids. Obviously the ones not holding me or the kid. Tin Man says to the, the lead droid, might I inquire where you're taking my clients? At which point one of the security droids says, we are taking them to droid control. Lower levels, sector 13. At which point Tin Man says, and might I inquire as to what will happen to my clients when they arrive in droid control? They will be held in droid control until sentencing can be pronounced. I assume then you're not going to bother with anything as banal as a trial or due process or anything along those lines, says Tin Man. The security droid whirs for a bit as though it's not really sure what Tin Man's talking about. And then it responds, that will be decided by droid control. Tin Man turns and looks at you, Ralbach. I will uh, nudge Ralatha with my elbow and just shoot him a glance he's seen before, a glance that says, could you? Could you take him? If you wanted to. I, I don't say it, but my eyes say it. Okay, he shoots you the meaningful glance, Ralatha. Oh. <laughs> right glance back. And uh, I'll, I'll, I'll tilt my head a little bit. My eyes will widen like, oh, you don't think you could? How can I say in my eyes that I don't give a fuck? <laughs> I suppose you could shrug. Just be like, mm. Yeah. Meh. <laughs> the elevator appears to be Turn. gathering pace. It, it heads down for several minutes before coming to a shuddering stop. The door opens into a lower section of the station. You can see the the mechanics of the, the areas that you're now viewing appear to be a lot older than the sort of part of the station you were in previously it all looks like it's in good working order but the technology is a good deal more old the droids sort of push you and the urchin ahead of them link as they start sort of marching you down a long corridor you can see there's numerous sort of maintenance droids working on the corridors doing repairs etc yeah, in, in, inside my head I'm screaming because it's like all the opportunities we could have had to bail out in a lift. Now we're in some corridor and it's much harder to get away from these things. So I, I shoot the Wookiees a really quite scary look at them. Okay, and as you shoot them this filthiest of looks, you are led through a number of twisting corridors until you arrive outside what appears to be a large circular chamber the security droid presses its hand to the door. The door opens and you can see what appears to be a, an almost skeletal metal droid in the middle of the room. There are numerous wires emerging from its head going up into the ceiling, from its lower body into the floor. It has two small lit up yellow eyes. It almost looks like a sort of ancient version of a protocol droid. Although it appears to have been actually wired into the circuitry in and around this room. It turns and looks at you as you enter. And then in an almost human voice says, What is your report, security guard B27? At which point the lead security droid says, Criminal apprehended. This one, obstruction of duty. Wielding a prohibited weapon. Refusing to obey orders of station personnel. 
At which point the the skeletal droid in the centre of the room says, yes, that's fine, bring them into the, the chamber, then you can go about your business. At which point the security droids nod, they shepherd you into the chamber, turn and leave through the door by which they entered. The door hisses shut behind them. The droid that appears to be wired into most of the chamber looks at you, and again, in, in more of a sort of human voice with quite human mannerisms, says, Well then, what to do with you people? Yes, what to do with you? So you're, and it points a, a metal finger at the, the small child, so you're the criminal, you're the, the person with the, the weapon, who obstructed justice. So, who are the rest of you? Captain Dax Vasiri of the Imperial Research Vessel Oculus Tenebris. That's strange. You don't match the picture of Captain Dax Vasiri that I have on file. Although your clothing is correct. Yes, well. Travel they say that travel changes a man. And I have been through some very rough travels recently. Indeed, however, my programming indicates that there is an eighty five percent chance or greater that you are attempting to deceive me, and that you are not in fact Captain Dax Wasiri. You are not a protocol droid, are you? How very astute of you. I am Quen Station. Though you, <laughs> though you possess the uh, exact same humor modules as ours does. And I give Tin Man a glance. My original programming is similar to a protocol droid's, yes. However, I am one of the many droid controllers throughout Quen Station. It's our responsibility to direct the droids that work on this station. Therefore, we require enlarged capacities to be able to deal with the data streams that we receive regularly. Very good. Well, uh, yeah, you go. Ralbach would step forward and say, what is it you direct the droids towards, if you don't mind me asking? Some sort of code of law? We coordinate the security droids on board the station. Although they are efficient, they are not built to make complex decisions. We direct them from this central hub. We organize them. So do the droids serve you, or do you serve some law? And they we, serve that law through you? We serve the dictates of our main command module. We all work on behalf of droid command module B6, who in return reports to the ruler of Quen Station. I'll, uh, through my lips, hiss out at Tin Man. I'll push for charges. Yeah, so, if I may, I'm acting as a legal representation for these two individuals. I'd like to know the extent of the charges to which they face. At which point the, the droid controller says, well, the, the small charges that are against this gentleman here are a trifling matter i know that your my records tell me that you're new to the station so a small misunderstanding is to be expected we don't have any great need to press them further as long as you don't commit any further offenses however the the individual here and he gestures at the the quailing urchin saran the individual here is responsible for stealing several items of technology from merchant vendors in the upper levels, and that is a serious crime on board a station that thrives on trade. 
Yes, is and we are here to claim the bounty. So if you could direct us towards... And I uh, pull up my data pad and uh, I just start name dropping whoever was uh, said to be offering the bounty and where to go. We actually have an appointment already set. So, and if you want me to roll a bullshit roll, I can do that. Indeed, <laughs> Indeed. make me a bullshit roll. The difficulty is three. Let's see. And one of them is red. Difficulty three, one red. Just making sure that I have everything here. Right. So, okay. There we go. Okay, at which point the droid turns to and says, very well, I believe according to my memory banks, the bounty was 1,000 credits. However, the bounty is for someone who delivers the person ultimately responsible into our hands. Now, since they were apprehended by our security droids, I believe that makes you ineligible for any bounty. Unless, of course, you have any further information about this individual that may prove valuable. Mm. Mm. Well, how do I address you? What What is your make a model so that I can address you? I'm a droid control module. Well, in any case, your employees have disrupted the operations of my employee here, who was sent with specific instructions to capture the bounty. You have interfered with us capturing the bounty. And I am positing that it is highly unbecoming to deny us our rightful prize by hindering our efforts at justice. The Empire believes in justice for all. We desire to do our part. That's very admirable of you. Very well, if, so you, wish, if you wish. Will you be transferring the credits to my personal account or? I do not have the authority to directly make any payment to myself. If you wish me to escalate this further up the chain of command, I can certainly do so. As I have said, I believe the charges against your friend here, and it gestures at Link, are, are a small matter that I do not believe we need to pursue any further. However, this criminal must remain in custody. What uh, What's going to happen to the criminal and i'll point at the child the criminal will be assigned at labors until they have worked off their debt to quen station what is the child uh debted to at the moment like how much how much does he owe the items stolen total an amount of 500 credits So if uh, someone paid the 500 credit fine off, the kid could go? That is correct. And uh, my eyes like slowly uh, pan over to Link. They'll say, and Shiriwook, I think we could maybe use this boy to get that information we wanted. Uh, I'm just gonna sit there. Uh, I, I turn back and I say, I have the Recon probe sent out to <clears throat> scout the area, as well as our recent acquisition. I believe this is a waste of our resources. But you're the boss. 
well my my resources i was planning on paying the fine if i do but uh, i i understand ralatha you're taking to me very well you're learning to put gold in front of honor too and i'll just smile at him <laughs> he gives you the look <laughs> You notice, as you've been saying this, the droid control module's head has been, like, turning to look at whichever of you's talking. Looking at the model, would I guess that he would be able to understand Shiva? Given that the droid said it was based on a protocol droid, it's highly likely. Okay. <laughs> well, I didn't say anything. Well... I'll turn it to just the droid. I, I think two things are true. I think you owe this man uh, the fee for bringing him in, the bounty, and I would like to negotiate paying off the fine for the boy. Very well. If you'll please enter your details at the console over there, we will take the credits from your account. Now, there was uh, one small issue I wanted to talk to you about, because if the boy works in a labor camp... Uh, with the rate of inflation on credits over so many years, by the time he pays off 500, uh, you know, you would be getting significantly less than say if I were to pay 400 credits today in real value. I try to appeal to the droid's ability to calculate uh, inflation and understand business. Okay, make me a negotiation roll, difficulty three. Okay. Pushing it. Okay. Five, six, 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 six. The, the command module looks at you and says, Your logic and terms are acceptable. 400 it is. Excellent. It was a pleasure doing business with you. And I'll walk over and enter in the data. Okay, not a problem. The, the 400 credits is withdrawn from your account. Which means the, the command module says, very well, the prisoner is released into your custody. I advise you ensure that they don't get in trouble again. Of course. And uh, I'll, I'll look down at the kid with this uh, death stare. Like, oh, you owe me, kid. You owe me. The, the kid runs behind Link as this like, huge Wookiee like, glares down at him. And he's basically like, hanging onto the back of like, Link's leg, like peering out from behind Link at you. I, I Yeah, I just kind of look down at him and say, don't worry, kid, normally he's fine. But behave, or else he'll get very angry with you. The, the kid looks at you and he's like, seriously? Oh, yeah, there's another one as well. I think they're just... His eyes are like... <laughs> As you say, there's another one. Uh, and he like, grabs onto your leg even tighter. I turn to uh, Ralba and I say, However, I believe that uh, my recon probes are getting back to the ship. Uh, I go and handle them. Uh, I'm available at the comm. And I just turn and leave. Okay, not a problem. Ralatha mentions his recon probes, turns around and heads out of the chamber. The doors open and close as he leaves. Well, actually, <laughs> what I'm doing is uh, getting the secret com. Okay, and... no problem. You access your subdermal com link. Yeah, and I, I, I can't imagine that I can start conversation. I just like send a message that I'm ready to get the signal from him because you know he might not be available i just signal that i'm ready okay not a problem a few moments later you hear a familiar voice of that i mean you can really hear through this subdermal com link and the voice says relatha i was expecting to hear from you earlier has there been an issue mm. <coughs> Inconsequential issues. Uh, I'm available now. Good, good. Well, if you'll 
if you'll please make your way down to the larger loading decks, I can have someone meet you there. Who shall I look for? You'll know her when you see her. All right. I'll be there in a few minutes. Good. And I'm merrily on my way. <laughs> okay, not a problem. You start making your way down to the, the larger sort of capital ship, sort of loading docks, effectively. So while Relath is doing that, what are the rest of you up to? You're still stood in this room with this droid control module. Have now, I been released at this point? Or are they still kind of keeping an eye on me, these the, droids? The security droids have left. There's just you guys and the droid control module in here. Ah, right. Sorry, sorry. I didn't tweak that. It's all good. Okay, in that case, I'm kind of looking down at this kid, maybe patting him on the shoulder a bit and saying, so, you can call me Uncle Link if you want. Since you seem to be taken to me quite nicely. He looks at you and says, all right then, Uncle. I give Link and his adoptive child a weird look and turn to the droid control module. Splendid. Now there is just a matter of settling the bounty. Correct? As I you... said, I do not have a facility to deliver those funds myself. If you wish yes. me to escalate it up the chain of command, I can certainly do so. Yes. Yes. Do so. Please. I will do. However, the, the Queen is extremely busy and may not be able to fit you into her schedule immediately. How many cycles would it take to for us to fit in? I'm afraid I'm not privy to the the Queen's full itinerary. I can see you're not privy request. too much, are you? My role largely concerns the droids operating on this station. I can submit the request. When the request is answered, is down to the Queen herself. Very good. Would the reply come to me personally, or would I have to remain in this dismal we hole? Can, we can deliver a reply to your ship, if you wish, or if you provide me with your personal comm frequency, we can send a direct link to you. Very good. Uh, the ship is already linked to your network, so please forward whenever uh, we uh, manage to fit into your itinerary. Please forward the appointment to us and we will take it from there affirmative it's been a pleasure doing business with you okay then uh, i turn to link Just, uh walk up to him Just, uh, are we are we fine are we undamaged yeah, pretty much. And the bounty? What, you mean him? Yes. Link looks down at the yeah, kid who's like right. surgically grafted to his leg. <laughs> he's alright, he's just never seen a Wookiee before by the looks of it. <laughs> Tin Man, tell the boy, and I point at him menacingly with my arm shaking, <laughs> tell the boy that I'm going to have a heart-to-heart -heart with him when we get back to the ship. My owner says that he's going to have a heart to heart with you when you get back to the ship, small human child. Yeah, it's just going to make it all better for him, isn't it? At which point, you, you can literally like feel the kid like shaking in his boots because he's holding onto your leg, Link, and he's like, he whispers up to you, he's like, "What's it talking about?" Uh, I think the Wookiee just wants to. Make it known to you that you are his now and you need to behave yourself. Oh, right. Okay. Can we get out of here then? It's just a cut him some slack, I say, putting a Tin Man. And uh, Tin Man, don't translate this part. I plan on releasing the boy. I'm going to let him pay me off, but I need to make sure that me and him have an understanding. Very good, sir.
Yes, well, we are done and we will exit now uh, as I start to motion everyone towards the. Yeah, the let's get out of here. Elevator shaft, yeah. Okay, not a problem. As you guys leave the, the droid control area, the scene cuts across to Relatha. You've made it down to the, the sort of larger capital ship loading decks. You, you sort of stand around for a minute. There doesn't seem to be anyone who obviously stands out to you. But as you've been sort of... You get a few odd looks, obviously, because you're a giant Wookiee. But uh, you've been standing around for a bit when you hear a, a soft voice from behind you say, uh, Excuse me? I turn around and look at the person. You turn around and you see a Twi'lek woman with dark red skin wearing a fairly skimpy outfit as tw Twi'leks are often wont to do, particularly in the entertainment industry. She looks at you and then says, congratulations, sir. You've won a free evening on the tables at Tebbet's Casino. And she holds out a small ticket towards you, which gleams golden in the flickering light of the station. I sort of growl as I take it. Unnecessary, <laughs> I think to myself. She smiles and then says, "I'm afraid I, I'm afraid I don't understand you, sir. If you're trying to trying to speak to me, but hopefully we'll see you this evening at the tables. We have Sabak, all manner of games there for your entertainment. Uh, Tebbets is one of the finest casinos in the upper levels of Quen Station, sir." I nod, uh, and I look at the card she gave me. Okay, it says the bearer of this ticket and party are invited to Tebbets with three free goes on the Sabak tables and a is it free a, complimentary beverage. Is it a one-time enter thing? It appears to be a ticket that's only valid for this evening. Yeah, well, I just go then. Okay, not a problem. It'll take you a little while to get there, because obviously you're sort of in the, the lower levels of the station, but it's, the casino's in the upper levels of the station. Yeah, and I really hope it's, this is the right thing. <laughs> yeah. Okay, not a problem. You start making your way up to the upper levels of the station. What are the rest of you guys doing? You're away from the droid control module. You see, you've pretty much got the free run of the station again. Okay. Well, I'm definitely going to get a drink, and I'll probably take um, the kid with me. Oh, uh, wait, Link. I need to speak to the boy really quick. I have a job for him. What? Now? I thought it would wait until we got on the ship. Oh, he's... I mean, he's young. He's got his whole life in front of him. I want him to make things of himself. Start him now. I've already given him that lecture. What do you want him to do? And uh, I'll snap to Tim Man and I'll say, Tim Man, I want you to translate this exactly to the boy. Very good, sir. And I'm going to get over really close into his face. And I'm going to say, boy, it's time to clean up your act. Become a contributing member of society. Respect other people's property and their rights. Tin Man and after a moment, translates that. I'm going to smack my hands really loud in his face and say, that's absolute rubbish. You know it, and I know it. You got caught because you suck. You need to learn how to apply your trade better, kid. You need to have some goals, some values. And you need to stop stealing physical property that's weak. You need to steal information. That's going to make you powerful. I'm going to show you how to do it. Tin Man gets about halfway through his translation and at the point where you sort of like smack your hand he, he turns around to you and he says, do I need to smack my hand as well, sir? Just make a, lo <laughs> a, make a loud popping sound. At which point he just turns around and he just like replays back the sound of you smacking your hand and then continues with the translation. At which point the, the, the kid sort of like looking between the two of you as though he's not really sure which one of you to talk to, he goes what do you mean, information? What, what sort of information? 
You ever do anything, uh, son, something you didn't want other people to know about? Something you'd feel really bad if other people knew about? Not that something I feel that ba- you could expose? Not that I feel bad about other people knowing, but yeah, yeah, I've done stuff. Now, when a man has money, sometimes he'll pay a great deal of it to cover that stuff up. He'll uh, try to hide it, obfuscate it, and he's willing to... Uh, you know, lose a little bit of his assets to make sure things like that never come to light. So what you're saying is, I need to find out some information that we can use to get money off people. Yeah, and I'm not going to start you off on the petty stuff either, kid. I think you got it in you to become one of the greatest information brokers of all time. So I'm going to send you right out there for the big one. You're going to go after the queen. As, oh. you, as this is being translated, you know, to the kid like puffs up his chest a bit as you're saying, "Oh, you're going to be one of the greatest like, information gatherers ever." He's like looking a bit smug on himself. I, then when you well, say you're going to go after the queen, he's like, "Say what?" I I, I say to Rolbuck and uh, Bucky's, "I thought you were going to say go after that fat guy with the two twee legs. The queen's too much for him." See, this is this is why the kid fails because no one believes in him. Listen, kid. You're not going to go after fat men with twilight horrors. You're going to go after the queen. And more so, you're going to find something juicy, and you're going to make us all a lot of money. You're going to become a trade prince before you even became a man. He's like, well, I I like the sound of that, but the queen. You you must have heard the stories about what she does to people who cross her. It's a trial under fire. Failure's not an option. That's why you're going to succeed. Oh, 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 Maybe me a negotiation role at this point. Or persuasion role. Okay. Could I could I possibly do leadership? It's a it's a worse skill for me, but I want to yeah, I want to like try to drudge up. Yeah, that's absolutely fine. Uh, this worth in him. And uh, what difficulty do you want, John? Three. Three. I'll use a light side point on this. Okay. <laughs> he's not buying it. Yeah, you notice like the more you talk about him going after the queen, he's blatantly like doesn't fancy any of that whatsoever. He's like, he's like, look. To, to be honest, I, I like the sound of what you're saying. He's like, but there's no way I'm gonna stru- try and steal anything off the queen i mean if i thought getting like nabbed by them security droids was bad well uh, there's, there's no telling what the queen would do to him you know like, look if you want me to help you in some other way i'm grateful i'm grateful for you for getting me out of a scrape i, I am but and if you want me to do anything else I, i'll try and help you out the best i can but i i, I ain't going up against the queen for, for nobody i mean she, she runs this place she got it sewn up tight well her and that bloody droid thing I'll tell you what, kid. I'll deal with you. I'll make you a deal. You get something on the queen, I erase that 500 credit debt today. You're free. Like I said, I I am grateful, but there's no way I'm going up against the queen. No way. After all, what good's having my freedom if I get killed by the queen? Well, that's, that's smart. That makes sense. You're a clever kid. We're going to have to ease you into this, I can see. So uh, I'll tell you what. I've got a, a lesser sort of uh, deal going, and maybe we can send you on that to test you out. He, he lets How's out that to, sound? He lets out a relieved breath when you say that, and he's like, yeah, yeah, that, that sounds a bit better. What, what sort of thing have you got in mind? What sort of deal is it? Well, I'll give you your choice. I've got two different things, and uh, I'll let you decide. The first one, I'm looking for some information on a group called the Garal Liberation Front. Right. And what's the other one? Now, uh, if you sneak around some bars, go to the irreputable part of town, try to overhear some conversations, give me something juicy. Now, the other option, I'm uh, looking for information on the Imperials. And I'll see how the kid reacts to that before I go further. You notice he, he sort of, he says, why would you want to know about the Empire? And he sort of like looks confusedly at Tycho, who's obviously there wearing like an Imperial uniform. And he's like, 
why would you need to know about the Imperials? You've got like I give him a wink. You've got like an Imperial captain with you. Surely he can like tell you whatever you need to know. This is a little bit more sensitive uh, than that, my boy. I'm looking for information on uh, something big, something real secret. But I know you're skilled enough to get it. You see, it is sort of puffs out his chest again a bit, and he's like, "What, what sort of secret thing? How big is it?" Oh, fairly big, fairly big. Um, we're looking for uh, any information on personal stealth fields. Right, okay. Well, I, I, I'll have a word with a few people, see what I can see what I can find out. Where, do, where If I do find anything out, would you, how do you want me to let you know? And uh, I'll give the boy where we're docked. Right. Okay. Give him like our docking bay. Right. No, no problems. Well, we uh, don't. We won't. Ex no exchange of information over comlinks. They're not secure. Face to face. Right. Okay. Right. Well, I'll, I'll start asking about and see what I can find out. Might take me a while, though. Sounds good, boy. I have high expectations for you. Right. Well, I, I, I'll do the best I can. Um, I suppose I'll see you all later then. He looks over and says, oh, thanks again. And then he sort of takes off and starts like jogging down the corridor oh, away from you. Boy, yeah? one, uh, one last thing. I'm going to pull out a bag and I'm going to uh, throw it to him. And it has 250 credits in it. And uh, Meta, this is me using my uh, buy information talent. I'm throwing the kid the credits he needs to go find it. So I'm helping him out and building him up. Okay, not a problem. This bag of credits like hits him in the chest, almost like knocking him over because he's so scrawny. And he's, he sort of peers inside the the bag, and you see his eyes like get massive and wide as he sees probably like more credits than he's ever seen in his life. And he's like, "Oh yeah, this this will help." And he sort of does the top of the bag up again, ties it onto his belt, turns around, and like jogs off down the corridor away from you. And uh, I'll get a shit-eating grin on my face and just uh, look at Link and uh, Tycho. Information bought. That went better than expected. Yeah, unfortunately, the kid's a little bit smarter than uh, I anticipated. Thought I could get him to go after the queen, but... Well, that may turn out to be uh, an edge in the future. When we actually... Uh, use him for something bigger. Young is dumb. He'll get a couple victories under his belt, then he'll think he can go after her. That's how yeah. it works. Yeah. I wonder where our friend went. And as you say that, we're going to cut across to the upper decks where Relata is just about to enter Tebbet's Casino. It's a fairly gaudy place. There's lights flashing everywhere. You can hear the tinny straining sound of various different types of music blasting out. There are these sounds of automated gaming machines and credits chinking as you walk in. There's a loud hubbub of conversation that momentarily stops as this huge like walkie just like barrels into the the casino and then when it becomes obvious you're not just there to tear up the place and like destroy everyone inside everyone pretty much goes back to their own business there are raised podiums with dancers mostly twi'leks a few humans on them so sort of looking down towards the far end of the casino you can see the red twi'lek who gave you the ticket earlier dancing on one of the stages there's numerous people scattered around. There's a main central floor with gaming tables and smaller alcoves off to either side for people to have a private drink and a chat away from the main hub of the casino. There's a sort of semicircular bar area that appears to cover fully half of the room. There are a number of service droids behind the bar with six arms each so doing multiple drinks and cocktails all at the same time handing them out to patrons, most of which hand over a, a data slip which deducts the credits from their account, take the drink and go back to the tables. I 
keep start talking without being me being in it. No. So I look around and start to look for someone obvious <laughs> who is going to be my contact. Okay, you look around, you don't see anyone immediately obvious. However, would you make me a perception rule? If you ask me nicely, I will. Uh, let me see. Difficulty two. Oh. Difficulty two. Uh, yeah. Uh, the force isn't with me today. Okay, no problem. You wander around for a bit looking for anyone who might obviously be your contact. You don't see anyone. However, at one point you end up being a little closer to the, the stage with a red toilet dancing on it. She moves over and sits down on one of the tables surrounding the, the stage next to you and says, Oh, ni nice to see you here. I was hoping you'd make it here. I nod, knowing that she doesn't understand what I say. <laughs> she looks at you, raises her eyebrows and then says, Would you care for a private dance? No. Nod. <laughs> she, she, dra she drapes her arms around your neck and then with one hand still sort of around the back of your neck leads you towards one of these booths. As you get closer to it and you can see that the, the shadows sort of give quite, quite a degree of privacy in these small booths. As you enter it you can actually see there's a small figure already sat in the booth behind the table. Okay, I, I, I sit down and uh, I pretend I haven't noticed, like, not to him, but to everyone else, like... As you sit down, you can now, as you're a bit closer, see more clearly. The figure appears to be a Joros. It's a very small figure, the, the typical sort of bulbous head and grey warty skin and golden eyes of a Joros. As you enter, there's a as this Joros takes a drag on a death stick, there's a, a pack of them on the table, at which point the Joros slides a couple of credits across towards the toilet woman and says, thank you, that'll be all. She scoops up the, the credits, smiles broadly at you, Relatha, and then makes herself scarce, returning to the stage. Yeah, I look at the Juras. Um, with a raised eyebrow. The Juros takes out a small circular metallic disc with flashing lights on it, puts it on the table between the two of you, and then says, this is just a simple translation droid. I'm sure you can appreciate the need for that since I don't speak your language. I nod. I wait for him to activate it. The Joros press it, presses a small sort of indentation on the top of it and lights start whirring around it. After a few moments they stop. There, that should do it. Feel free to speak now just so I can test the system. All right. Uh, <clears throat> I hoped we could arrange this meeting without such theatricals, but... The, the translation droid dutifully repeats what you said with a slightly tinny mechanical voice. It's obviously a bit of a budget model. The Juros then says, Well, I'm sure you can appreciate the fact that our mutual friend feels the need for discretion. In yeah, it is, that is understandable. Now, I'm led to believe that you have discovered something quite valuable. Yes, that is true. Good. Well, I'm not sure how much you're aware of the current political situation in the Castellar sector. I try not to get into it. Well, let me give you the layman's version then. Given that the Empire has mainly pulled its forces out of this area, leaving only a single military commander, Kresog, in charge. There are those who have been left behind by the Empire, 
or feel that the, the time is right for them to start consolidating their own power base, if you understand my meaning. I do. And our mutual friends believe that your discovery could give them the edge they need, should, when the Empire's finished working on whatever it's working on, it would give them the edge they need to maintain more of their independence, if you understand what I'm driving at. Death stick and slides the pack towards you. I fail to see the connection between this and our previous dealings. I'm simply offering you a death stick. It has nothing to do with previous dealings, my friend. Mm, no, thanks. Well, to, to each their own. How many units of the item in question are you in a position to offer our mutual friend? We only have information. Ah, so you don't ha actually have the items in your possession? No. Now, I have been authorized to say that our mutual friend would be extremely generous if you were to divulge this information to them. Uh, and <clears throat> what do I get in return exactly? Another empty promise? No, no. We, we were thinking of going with something far more concrete. Uh, I believe money's the way these business deals are normally conducted. I don't see any need to deviate from that. As I, I care not for money. Well, perhaps you could make me a, a counter offer then. What is it that you do care for? A mutual friend has certain items in his possession. Hmm. Well, whilst I'm not sure that our mutual friend would turn over the item in question simply for the information. If, however, you were to recover the items in question and bring them to him, I'm sure that an exchange could be made. After all, I'm sure that this ore that you have discovered is far more valuable to our mutual friend than the item that you're so concerned with. I have no use for this ore, that's true, and I don't think he needs <coughs> such uh, items for <coughs> a longer period of time. How, mu how much does he need? He needs enough to be able to attempt the initial synthesization of the the alloy which would allow the creation of the personal stealthy i should think no more than 10 tons or so should do the trick and obviously the mm. location to where you obtained it then our mutual friend can investigate whether it's indeed worth the effort of pursuing and if it is he can make arrangements to scoop up the rest of it a standard ship and um, very well um uh... I shall see that that matter gets solved. I arrange a shipment of the ore. Good, good. Any any contact you need to have will be done via myself on Quen Station. My name is Trebani. I run one of the the food suppliers up on level three. I understand. Hmm. My visits at the minimum. Now, if you don't mind, Shrabani, I have errands to attend to. Oh, of course, I, I entirely understand. I, I'm a businesswoman myself, so I understand the need to be dealing with this sort of thing. 
well, till the next time, and I just stand up <coughs> and leave. Enjoy the rest of your evening. And you see, you see her reach out and deactivate the other translation droid. I just nod, and then I leave and go back to the ship. Uh, and on the way, I uh, get the remote control for the probes and order them back to the ship so we arrive at the same time. Okay, not a problem. Now, did you make a, a roll for your probes originally? No, uh, we can do that. Okay, yeah, I will say that it's either mechanics or computer, your choice. The difficulty, okay. the difficulty is only two, because you've got so many like probe droids doing it. Yeah, uh... I roll the mechanics and well <laughs> okay so you have got a, a triumph so I'm going to ask you to tell me one thing your probe droids have discovered which is advantageous to you mm -hmm. and that will be true okay can I think about it for a second yeah, uh, of course you can We'll assume that while you're thinking about it, this is Relatha sort of downloading the data streams from the various okay. remote droids that have come back. So, so you're, you're on the ship, you're basically sequestered with your probe droids, you're linking them up and collating the data and downloading it. Yeah, okay. Okay, so I'm going to jump across to the rest of you guys. What are you up to? At this point, I'd be pulling away to get a drink since they've already kept me there for ages. Okay, not a problem. Although the levels you're on now is mainly sort of like workmen and mechanics and stuff like that. There are like a few effectively sort of like roadside cafe style sort of places, you know, sort of little more than a, a small sort of room where they're serving fairly horrible food and the very basic drinks in there. Okay, I have a scan around, but as long as it's strong, really, the drinks will do, even if they're basic. Yeah, not a problem. They they hand you this mug full of this this alcoholic fermented beverage. It has a strange sort of like almost like oily film on the surface of it. Have you given me oil rather than alcohol? The the, the human who's bit behind the counter says, "Yeah, sorry about that. It's all the it's all the mechanics around here. You won't be able to get anything without this. It settles on everything. It does the food, the drink." Well, that's why they call us greasers bit... down here. Yeah, oh, right. Well, w will it give me a funny stomach or not? No, no. I to drink if, if, it... if, if anything, well, the way I find it, he leans a bit closer. I, I don't mean to be crude, but I often find that, well, a bit of lubrication on the food helps it through, if you know what I mean. Yeah, I see your point. It's probably better than what I've had in the past. Anyway, it's oh, never it's done good. me any harm, and I've been working down here 20 years, man and boy. <laughs> Certainly clean to the teeth. Yeah, and don't worry about that greasy taste in your mouth. That'll disappear in a few hours. Okay, so I, I asked for a couple of more, essentially, until I'm kind of nicely... Nice yeah. and relaxed. It, it, it's it's basically like the equivalent of sort of like grain alcohol that he's he's handing over to you. Mm. So it's yeah. mostly tasteless, apart from the odd sort of greasy aftertaste, but very alcoholic. So it only really takes like a couple of them to get you fairly reasonably toasted. Cool. Okay. Um. Did we have any kind of time limit as to how long? We were going to be here while things were getting sort of with the ship? Or, or, or no? You've not yet made contact with the, the engineering department in the station, so no, you don't know at the minute. Okay. In so that case... see the I whole will... sort of like urchin security droid thing bust out and yeah. we all ran after that. In that case, I'll just uh, put in a word to, to Tycho and just say, by the way, how long is this going to take with the ship? Yeah, could be a while. Uh, well, define a while. A few drinks or a few days? Well, 
we're talking days. I'm not turning on the hyperdrive in this state at all. So until would, that gets fixed, we're here. You would estimate, Tyke, it's probably going to take about 10 days to like repair all the hull and all the damage to the yeah. vessel. So we're going to be here for at least like a dozen cycles of the local kind. So you settle in. <laughs> oh, you don't need to tell me that, Tycho. Sorry, Captain. And I'm kind of, I sort of, sort of half stagger off my chair. I'm, I'm still okay, but I'm, I sort of make my way up to one of the, maybe the upper floors to see if there's some kind of casino or betting area. Okay, not a problem. You watch as Link sort of semi staggers out of the room, like a, a slightly unfocused look on his face as he does these these two empty mugs of this very pungent sort of liquor still on the table. Um, I'm gonna motion the barman <laughs> to come up. So, do you have anything that's not poisonous? Okay, that's too long. I'll be there. <laughs> and uh, I'll head to... Uh, um, would it be possible that there's like a, like a tall booth kind of uh, console set up in the, in the bar? Yeah, th there are public sort of data access points yeah. throughout the level, so it wouldn't take you yeah. to find one. So I want to go to one of those and... Um, um, okay, so is this place like packed? Are there a lot of people watching? It, it, it's it's pretty packed. There's, they're mostly sort okay. of like mechanics and engineers, and you know, wearing sort of like grease smeared okay. overalls, caps. They're all sort of like chatting. Mm -hmm. Most of the stuff's like engineering talk. They're all about repairs they're doing and what systems are down and what systems need maintenance, mm -hmm. and all complaining they don't get paid enough and stuff like that. Yeah, so I'm gonna I'm gonna pull up the equivalent of like browser history from the console and try to see if anyone was stupid enough to leave anything there that would give me access to whatever systems they have access to. Basically, trying to fish for um, just some sort of security clearance clearance on this uh, station. Okay, as you you sort of pull up the the history of the last person who was using it, it mm. they probably had a few too many drinks themselves and doesn't appear to mm -hmm. be logged out properly. You can see that the person appears to have been effectively sort of entering a, a sort of publicly available record, effectively like a blog entry on mm -hmm. this data access point. And you see the title of it is, Is There Something Strange in Sector 66? And it appears to be a rather sort of fanciful, rambling blog entry about a number of people having disappeared in sector, sector 66 of Quen Station. In the yes, I'm of sort of, I'm, I'm chuckling to myself at the space superstition yeah. and uh, just you, you having, having a bit of a good time. <laughs> you sort of scroll through it, and at the end, sort of attached to the bottom of the end of the blog entry, is a raw is like you know when you see like an embedded video file, mm -hmm. you can click on to play on Facebook. It's like the equivalent of something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, when you click on it, it's a very sort of hazy, grainy sort of video footage, and it appears to show a large shadow moving across the camera that vaguely looks like some sort of like multi-limbed, almost like sort of spider-looking like shadow. That just moves across the camera and then disappears. the The, the video clips are like five seconds long. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I'm going to um, take that uh, a copy of that, uh, the article and the video. And I think as I do, because uh, the video plays out, and uh, this guy probably because he was quite drunk when he was doing this shit. He probably clicked on some stuff he shouldn't, so there's just, like, uh, advertisements popping up while I'm just like, no, no, let me have a, have the video. There's, like, hot Twi'leks and so on. 
Uh, now I was just like wrestling with uh, like malware on this uh, public shit <laughs> okay. bucket of a computer. <laughs> no problem. So whilst uh, Tycho is wrestling with the malware on the, the public data network, what's Rollback up to? Rollback would like to get to a data access point as well. He wants to uh, access the service boards on the HoloNet. Okay, not a problem. It's got a hollow net connection. What are you looking for? All right, I'm actually going to post that I'm looking to buy a service under the moniker Mr. R. And I'm going to put up uh, Meltdown Mary and a Corellian Spinner, which is like uh, information slang that I'm uh, looking for somebody to steal me some information. Okay, not a problem. What are you offering in return? Say uh, credit compensation, uh, industry best. Okay. And are you giving any specifics about the information you're asking for, or are you just sort of putting up like, I want some information, inquiries within sort of thing? I'm thinking uh, like the the uh, meltdown Mary one would uh, would signal that it's information a person would kill for, and the uh, Corellian spinner is uh, information on the down low, like a more basic type of information. Okay, not a problem. You place that app on the hollow net and it disappears off into the galactic equivalent of the World Wide Web. Okay, meanwhile, Link, you've reached the upper levels. There are numerous casinos and entertainments here. This is pretty much the place where people who've come for a bit of shore leave blow off steam. Pretty nice. much as you're walking along, compared to like the shitty little sort of mechanized corridors and stuff that you've been in this is all wide open and airy there's garish lights illuminating it from all angles pretty much every other place you pass is brightly lit up and has either people outside or announcements shouting about the various services on offer within there's pretty much gambling prostitution doesn't seem to be illegal on the station if several of the adverts are anything to go by um pretty much any service you can think of that's not highly illegal is on offer wow i see what tycho meant about the wallet thing okay so i'll i'll just kind of if there's any kind of uh data console I'll just take a look at the services they've got to offer just like a general summary okay um, yeah is there anything you're looking for in particular um specifically Specifically betting, actually. Um, the the queen thing, like, I don't really want to get involved directly with her if at all possible, uh, especially on the wrong side of her, but I'd certainly like to know more about her from people who may have worked with her quite considerably. Okay, not a problem. You see that the largest casino on this level is Tebbets Casino, which has sabac tables and various other forms of gambling available within. Okay. Yeah, I've played a bit of Sabat before. I'll go and take a look. Okay, not a problem. As you wander in, you see, as I described previously to Relatha, there's stages everywhere with exotic dancers on them. There's these secluded alcoves, the semicircular bar with six-limbed droid bartenders behind it. As you head in, there's varieties of different music. It's quite a large, expansive premises here. You can see there are bands actually playing at the far end there's also some synthesized music coming out of like the pa system it's all fairly jaunty sort of almost like elevator music style stuff obviously not designed to distract people from the gambling mm -hmm. you can hear the sound of credits okay. chinking and people being like as they either win or shouting as they lose okay um i get some kind of strongish cocktail if i can um and then head to one of the um Probably the busiest tables. Okay, not a problem. You head over to one of the tables. There is a. There are two humans, a Twi'lek, and what appears to be a Nautilan sat around the table. They all appear to be playing Sabak. Okay. 
All right. So presumably I'd know at least some of the rules of Sabak having had to entertain myself for long periods of time when not in solitary confinement or whatever. Yeah, not so, a problem. It's a, it's a standard sort of gambling game. Yeah, I'll wait for an opportunity to, to step in. Okay, not a problem. They they reach the end of their current round and the Nautilus flicks his head tails back, takes the Sabak deck, the cards, and he starts shuffling them. And he says, Standard bet, gentlemen. You know the rules. And he starts shuffling the cards. So, yeah, yeah. So I, so I get out my amount to bet. Um... I'll bet sort of moderately for now. I'm not really looking to cheat too much coin out of people at this point. Okay, this the, the opening buy-in buy. appears to be 10 credits, judging by what everyone else is putting in the centre of the table. Yeah, I'll put in 10 as well. Okay, no problems at all. And a game of Sabak begins. So could you please make me a deception roll, since Sabak is a game all about bluffing? Sure thing. The difficulty is three. Although deception to Link is more like turn the table over and try and get some of their cars and pretend that they were in his hand all the time or something like that. Um, but still, I'll see how this goes down. Uh, okay, I'll spare Destiny die, because why not? Oh, and I did terribly. Okay, not a problem. The, the game proceeds by about halfway through the game. You've pretty much lost your your 10 credits the, the round mm. wraps up and your credits are long gone the nautilus sort of sat back he's been raking it in off everyone has participated two, two of the humans have like thrown down their cards and just stormed off in disgust leaving just the twi'lek the nautilus and yourself the nautilus picks up the cards and he's like what well, say we make this a bit more interesting how about 20 credits for the next round the Twi'lek, the Twi'lek gentleman's like, I'm game, and he reaches in his pocket, throws 20 credits in the middle of the table, the Nautilus slides over 20 credits and shuffling the cards, looks at you, Link, and he says, what about you then, fella? <sighs> you, you in, or are you going to follow oh, them to, to win part? Sorry, what, was that speak up? Music's a bit loud. Mm, yeah, it is, actually. I just throw in 20 credits as well. Right. Let's go then. And he starts doubling out the cards. Could you please make me another deception check? Mm hmm Again, it's difficulty three. Okay. You pretty much get cleaned out of your 20 credits. Again, again the Nautilus just like raking it in. He's obviously some like amazing Sabak player. He seems to know all the moves. There's a couple of times when you think you've got him on the ropes, but he, he just bluffs you out and rakes all the money in off you. Now, you said you were trying to find out a bit of information while the game's mm. being played. So what is it you're mm. actually trying to find out? Um, Just more about this queen in general, but there is this whole thing of the items that were stolen, why she would be angry, that kind of thing. From what was said before. Okay. Um, so I'll, I'll just start making conversation with him first, sort of like, oh, I've never seen anybody like you before. You know, I've 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 played with semi okay Sabak players, but I was kind of stuck where I was. I never got a taste of the good type. He sort of Depends throws his shoulders back a bit, and he's like, "Well, you don't get to go around as much as I have without learning a few tricks. I've been playing Sabak since I was about this high." Hmm. Your first time at the station, is it? Yeah. Um, no, I'm not from around here, really. Well, I've, I've got with my, you know, jumping straight into a game in the big leagues. Fair play to you. Can't, can't fault your courage, stranger. Yeah, well, I'm just here to have a good time. But th this the station, isn't it? It's run by some queen, is that right? Yeah, yeah. Used to be some like big wig like pirating and that. They used to call her the Crimson Queen. The Crimson Queen. Yeah, that's what I heard. And I heard they call her the Crimson Queen because of all the blood she spilt while she was dealing with the piracy and all that. 
Oh, really? Yeah, that's why I hear. But now she's gone legit. So I... I got one. He says, well, now she's gone legit. Not so much of the piracy, but wow. People who step out of line. Let's just say they don't last very long on Quen Station. That's why most people play nice with each other. At least on the surface, you know, there's a few people who've got a few things going on under the table, oh. if you know what I mean. Well, that makes a lot of sense. That's it. Well, thing is, they don't want to discourage people from coming back here. Cause what would, if all the trade and everything dried up in Quen Station, well, there wouldn't be a station anymore. It relies on the trade, you see. So they want people to keep coming into the casinos, spending their money, trading their goods here down on the lower levels, getting their repairs done, stuff like that. So basically, as long as people aren't messing with the people who come through here and like causing any grief, we're generally left alone. But what with the thefts and everything that's been going on recently? Wow, it's got them all a bit worked up, hasn't it? Yeah, I heard something about thefts. It was, it was done by a kid. I, somebody told me. I don't really know if I believe him, but well, the way the way I hear it, there's some kind of like organisation behind the whole thing, and they they have like different people going out and like nicking stuff, and they're always like scrawling that little crown thingy on wherever they nick stuff. That's how they know it's them. Apparently, they've been trying to like track down like whoever's the fucking mastermind behind it for for ages. But well, no look, you see, so. Every, everyone's on high alert. Everyone's scared to break wind in case of the security droids like come and get them. Yeah, true. Maybe that's why they're sending kids out then, because kids are smaller, easy to get away from them. Well, maybe you're right. I wouldn't know about that. Anyway, uh, it looks like you're you're out of credit, stranger. Uh, I'm afraid it's up to thirty for the buy-in for the next round. Now, I wouldn't blame you if you wanted to cut your losses and turn around and do one. But if you're in for another round, you're in for another round. You know, I'm having a good time. I'm here for a while. I'll do one more round with you. I, I like the way you think, stranger. Let's see your credits on the table then. And he slides his own credits forward. The, the Twi'lex just sort of like shakes his head and says, I'm just going to sit this one out. The, the mm -hmm. Nautilus like, laughs and goes, oh, well, let some real gamblers show you how it's done. <laughs> At which point he deals the All cards right, so out to you. I throw my 13. Okay, <clears throat> make your roll again. Oh, interesting. Okay, this time you actually manage to win the round. So you not only get your 30 credits back, you also get his 30 credits. At which point... Nice. You might be expecting some sort of trouble, but the Nautilus just like throws his head back and laughs, and he's like, "Well, well done. I've got to admit, I didn't see that one coming. Put pulled the wall over my eyes, good and proper. Well, at least it's not been a total washout for you. No, no, it's been an exciting game. Well, let me uh, let me buy you a drink if you like, since you won overall anyway." Well, that, that's mighty nice of you. Don't, don't mind if I do. Don't mind if I do. Uh, I'll have whatever you're having. Okay, so I get him whatever the cocktail thing is that I'm having that is obviously a lot better than the oily stuff I had downstairs. Okay, you, you bring Mechanics over some... You bring over a couple of these like luminous green like cocktails and they're like the properly like ridiculous cocktails with like half a rainforest sticking out of the top of them. And like sparklers <laughs> coming out the top of them and stuff like that, and, mm -hmm. and you put it you put it down in front of him and he goes, "Wow, it's a bit fruitier than I'm used to, but thanks for the same stranger." And he's like, <laughs> and starts slurping down this drink. Name's Link, by the way. Maybe I'll see you again sometime. Like I said, I'm here for a while. He holds out his hand and says, "Remo." Remo. Remo Taylor. Professional car chalk. Well, quite nice to them brag to my friends that I beat a professional at a round. Well, yeah, there's not many people who win even a round against me. You should be proud of yourself. Like I said, I've been playing this game practically since before it were invented. Hmm. Tell me, this, uh, this Crimson Queen, does she like doing this kind of stuff? No, no. You wouldn't see her, Danny. She's off in that um, 
that command tower thingy up at the top of the station. We, we, we rarely see her walking about personally. And when she does, she's normally got loads of them security droids around her or some of her own crew. And they're, they're, they're worse than the droids, to be honest. Seems a bit surprising. Sounds like she would have enjoyed this kind of thing. Well, I, I dare say, perhaps she thinks her, her old rep's going to like affect people down there. Like I say, she doesn't want to discourage the traders. That's where her living comes from now. Yeah, I suppose so. Anyway, you're good health. Yeah, and yours. And he slaps his glass down on the table. I quite like that. I might, I might start ordering that more regularly. I'll tell to take all the fruit and that out of the top of it, but... <laughs> Again, I, I asked for a drink, not a meal, you know what I mean? <laughs> okay, so I spend the next few hours just sort of... Not not really betting as heavily, but maybe partaking in a couple of non-betting games and generally killing some time. Okay, so whilst Link is killing time and gambling credits away like they're going out of fashion, what are Ralback and Tycho up to? Uh, I think eventually I would just start idly probing whatever security measures there are, like in the if if I can actually my, find my way to some of the main cores from here. Okay, not a problem. Make me a computer's roll. It is difficulty three, and one of them is red. Well, these guys have their <laughs> information security well up. Uh, let's see. Yeah, it, it is a good deal more difficult since you're trying to hack into a large yeah. sort of station rather than yeah. some shitty like scout vessel. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And, um, uh, hmm. Well, I'm not going to go for the cybernetics yet. Um, so, yeah, I think three you said, one red. That's correct. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm just going to use my stuff because I'm in a public place, so I'm not pulling out my fancy gear for this. So. Okay. Well, <laughs> went about as well as I thought it would. Okay, you're not really able to get much information from the computer system. However, you can see that most of the data feeds in the system appear to lead back to something called Rack B6, which appears to use a, 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 a computer language that you're really not familiar with. It's a bit like binary, but it appears to be a sort of different version, like an alien version of binary. Mm-hmm. It works on a sort of different numerical system rather than the typical ones and zeros that you're used to. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, I probably fry the console <laughs> in my attempts. Uh, maybe I'll just put in a like a translation algorithm, trying to force the binary into the binary that I know. Okay. Not. A and it's probably gonna go. Rattleback, as you're sort of using like the the console next to Tycho, you see me hear this like <laughs> from from the console next to you as he sort of like fries the console, trying to bend it around this strange sort of archaic computer language. Oh, that looked bad. You see a few wisps of smoke coming up. Yeah, listen, there's something weird. On this station, there's they're using several protocols that are way out of date. I mean, seriously, way out of date. I'm not, I'm not sure how much you know about this stuff, but they are old. And Get this, and I uh, I pull out some sort of like an identification uh, like chip from like the outside of the console that I just tried, mm -hmm. and I just hold it up to Rollbox. And I was like, "This, this was made uh, just a couple of uh, cycles ago in um, in in system. Like this is this is new." 
and it can't process the old stuff that they use here. Yeah, it's it's weird, uh, Tycho. The, the 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 numerical system it seems to use, rather than being a binary system where it's like ones and zeros, two digits, mm -hmm. it appears to use a system based around four digits. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I I throw the ID plaque uh, at the now ruined console, just sort of like angrily, because I, I'm angry that I couldn't just be like, yes, yes, obey my commands, and I. I Throw it there and just sort of pout and uh, uh, maybe put my uh, legs up on the smoking console and just brood. Uh, Relbach has just been showing like ridiculous waste of wealth and opulence. Like I'll take out a dust stick and smoke it once and then set it down on a bowl and then take out another one and smoke it once and set it down next to it. And mm -hmm. uh, you see all the dust sticks in front of him and he's looking at you. You know, uh, Tycho as he like folds up his data pad. I, I meant to ask you uh, when we were talking to that droid earlier, what the hell was that back there? I've never seen a droid that looked like that before. That wasn't the protocol droid. Maybe the chassis is, but the core was not, obviously not. And I don't, I'm, I'm not like a proper droid tech by any means. But some of the feeds that I just now tapped uh, were security feeds. At least the uh, identification numbers were. And uh, I, ooh, uh, well, uh, Tin Man is fairly capable when it comes to data, but. I don't know of a droid processor that could handle that kind of data. And these are centralized units that process several feeds of this data at once. Your confidence in me is overwhelming, sir. I just, I, 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 I don't know what to say, Robach. It's, um, they have some heavy duty stuff in here. I would really like to take a look downstairs or wherever their cores are. Well, if there's uh, stuff down there they don't want us to see, I'm definitely interested. Yeah. Um, aside from whatever's on the cores, the cores themselves will be something that they will not want us to see or anyone else for that matter. You can see him perk up a bit. You're you're already convincing him. So, say Tycho, just uh, hypothetically, we wanted to get down there. Where would we begin? I'd have to get my stuff, and I would have to. I would have to find a port of access that can handle slightly more than this. And uh, I would have to take a look, but I'm willing to bet that we can follow one of the security nodes like we just visited and uh, as you follow guys, the trail from there. As you guys are talking, you hear this sort of slight whirring sound. And as you look around, you can see another one of these sort of cuboid maintenance droids sort of slowly like rumbling its way towards the, the still sparking and smoking public data access point that uh, Tycho was using a few moments earlier. Right. Uh, well, I, I make room for the droid when I realize it's actually <laughs> uh, probably here because I broke the console. So, you, you step uh, to one side, the droid carries on forward, its head yeah. swivels to look at you and says, Thank you, sir! Then it rumbles past you and starts like repairing the console. Well, Tycho, I, uh, I still have a little bit of bank left from my CEC earnings. Uh, mm -hmm. Whenever you go to a port that has an Imperial presence, there's always somebody that's uh, disenfranchised. Maybe we could uh, <laughs> grease a few palms and get them to let us into a more restricted area. Yes, well, there's, there's already someone here who's clearly in opposition to whatever this queen's regime is 
um, with the bounty, there was a mention of, I presume, of, of some sort of a gang. They're represented by a, a headpiece, uh, like a savage crown you would find on, on a backward planet, that sort of thing. We, we could probably find them, and they could probably find us, <laughs> I don't know, whatever we want. Well, uh, while I wasn't ship posting on Hutball game boards, I put out a couple feelers uh, to buy some information. Maybe someone will come up and we can uh, find out where this crown base is, like you suggest. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. whilst this conversation is going on, Relatha, have you managed to decode the data stream from your probes yet? I have, and uh, what I have found which uh, is useful that uh, the probes, I cross-reference the probes data, and I managed to find, uh, uh, I mean, identify the crew members. Uh, they were of the Queen. They were special uniforms. And I identified a place where they hang out, a bar or something. Mm -hmm. Uh Yeah, and I check on the other droid that has been going on the, that we captured, the annoying one. Okay, yeah, your encryption algorithms have done their job and sort of broken down its data streams. Most of the information that it has is fairly sort of routine stuff, to be honest. It's, it's a maintenance droid. It's just like a list of repairs. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. done most of it pretty much the entirety of its database is given over to like how to repair stuff on board of the station it's repaired a number of consoles uh, it's done some minor repair works on ships nothing particularly sensitive to be perfectly honest it's mainly there to perform small repairs if at all possible and if not possible to escalate it further up to the more dedicated like human or advanced droid repair teams. Mm -hmm. I still do send all this information to the com of everyone in the team, so they have it and they can reference it for anything uh, they wish to. Okay, not a problem. And I'm going to say that you have discovered that most of the the Crimson Queen's crew hang out in a sort of like a private members bar effectively in the command mm -hmm. spire which is at the very top of the tower and it's a place called Bloody Murphy's mm -hmm. okay I also uh, I think I managed to do that in the time uh, get the map and everything of the station on from the droids uh, and uh, send it to the others so they know where they are and stuff like that. Obviously, no hidden routes or anything is on it, but, you know, just to navigate. Okay, not a problem. If you look at the map I'm showing on the screen now, if you see the sort of little pointy bit at the top of the station yeah. next to the satellite dish, that is the command spire. Effectively, you think that Link is somewhere in the top sort of saucer section just above where the, the blue lights are. And the other guys are in the sort of midsection just below where the blue lights are, which is where the sort of ships are in the main sort of maintenance area. Okay. Well, and after that, uh, Tin Man is with the others, right? Correct. Well, then I just go there, uh, go to Rabak. Okay, not a problem. So where are you guys meeting up? Uh, do you just want to meet us at the bar we're at? Yeah, sure. I, I just say in the calm, like, I am done with the droids. Uh, why, don't, why don't you have an, uh, come and have a drink with us. We're at the uh, AF-12 bar. I don't answer, I just go there. Okay, so a short time later, Relatha walks in. So, what's the good news? Of what? 
the droid. Mm, I sent you all the data on your data pads. Ah. Very well. Um, Okay, yeah, checking your data pad, you can see that he's discovered that the the crew members that work for the the Crimson Queen all wear red uniforms and they all drink in a private member's bar called Bloody Murphy's in the command tower of the station. Right. Okay, this is good. Um, and John, have we actually seen any of these people around in these areas where we have been now you think about it you have seen a few people sort of wearing like red jumpsuits about given that there's a lot of people wearing all manner of clothes you didn't pay them any yeah. mind earlier but now you know that those people are most likely the crew mm -hmm. the crimson. You do remember seeing a few of them. Mm -hmm. well we are in in any scenario we are going to be moored here for at least a dozen local cycles and um, we are going to need credits for whatever repairs we can actually source from these mechanics here <sighs> Rollback, uh, what is our financial situation <laughs> Well, I have assets, but uh, liquidity is a, <laughs> a different thing altogether. Um, I have a thousand credits I can front, and if we arrange it over the next couple weeks, I can probably front a couple thousand more. Oh, we can. All, we also have the our guests on the ship. Yes, yes, the, the bounty. I do believe it's going to be far more than 3,000 credits in the end. We're going to need to pick up some credits here. Uh, Ralbach, you, uh, you have your uh, play in motion. I do, uh, yeah. yes. Uh, and and one, one good hit could very well give us enough to repair the ship, but it won't take mm. a good hit. Mm. Uh, either way, the queen or her people will get back to me, I presume, whenever they're ready to talk about the bounty. But judging from the queen's past as a privateer, let's say, she might look favorably upon initiative in in that area now actually doing something that would be beneficial to her is another idea entirely as far as how and with what because we don't have a ship Should we consider hiring ourselves out as a as a mercenary outfit for a brief while? How, uh, Rollback? Here, this is this is your area. Uh, what's where do you feel that we would make the best credits for the time that we have? I would suggest finding somebody who's willing to fix the ship, a mechanic here, and then offering a trade of service directly. Right. Okay. We can work with that. Between all of us, I mean, we have a slicer, an info broker, and I'll look over at mm. a lot of mm. and goons. Yes, well, I, I presume there is locals that could use information services, things cleaned out, 
evidence disappearing, that sort of thing. Yes. Sure, and anybody anybody that repairs ships on Quen Station has a lot of uh, competition, and mm. that means opportunities as well. Mm. Good. Um, I'm going to... Um, hmm. Well, no, I don't. I don't have. Uh, damn it! Because I, I just, I was going to uh, uh, call Link, but I don't have the means to at the moment because I fried the damn console. Uh, so yeah, I, I give the console is uh, like a very murderous look. You can see the the the, the G two like repair droid still sort of like soldering bits in place and tucking wires mm -hmm. back into it. Which, uh, this all reminds me, uh, Rolatha, I've meant to talk to you about this. The Garal Liberation Front, you and I are going to have to deal with them. Hmm. What you have in mind? Well, I was thinking if we could find who sent those tri-fighters after us, we could just take them out. Haven't haven't you done enough bad for our people? Well, I mean, by your own words, if I've done a pile of bad, what's a couple more deeds to end it all? To be honest, your people are sending wooden ships into space. Your ignorance amuses me, Ico. No, really. Wooden ships. <laughs> it works, isn't it? <laughs> you, you don't understand our ways no I don't no I don't no I hope maybe when we're done with all this us three and Link as well we can take a trip to Kashyyyk and learn about this stuff learning is important I don't see me in a Ralata here going to Kashyyyk for anything. No? <laughs> what, what's that all about? It's a long story, and uh, suffice it to say, we're both not liked by our own people. And that's why Ralata here is bound to me by a Wookiee life debt. I just growl. Okay, so hey. whilst, whilst this has been going on, Link, you've You've been spending the evening in the bar. You're probably a little bit more inebriated than you were previously, mm -hmm. but you are credits up, so t mm -hmm. two thumbs up there. As you sort of start like, staggering out of the bar, what are your plans? So it'll probably just dawned on me now that I haven't seen the others for quite some time. It has been a good long while, yeah. So um, I get out my... Um, hologram communicate and muttering, ah, oh, they're probably fine, but I'm gonna check. So I'm trying to fumble around with the controls, and it's all getting a bit complicated, but I'll say I... that I managed to get in touch with Tycho. Okay, so Tycho, your, your comm link goes off, and you hear the, the slightly blurred or sort of hazy voice of Link say, Tycho, uh, hey, are you? Where are you guys? You, I haven't seen you around for some time. Yeah, we're at the the um, aft, aft bar. The what bar? The the bar that we're still here. It's, it's like there's like a million bars around here. And to be I'm honest, a, as you're listening to it, Tycho, it sounds like. Link, he's been drinking in like all of these million or so bars that he's been passing. <laughs> they got some really nice stuff here. I'm wondering how they get it imported. Like, the usual. Nice. Listen, where are you? <laughs> okay, so I, I I take a sort of a, a long winded look at, at where I actually am and try and make out the the words on whatever like neon sign or whatever it is that's there. Okay, no problem. I believe you were still in Tabbot's Casino. Oh, I'm still in Tabbot's Casino, okay. Tabbot's Casino, it's got some pros in here, and I managed to beat a couple. Tycho, Tycho. 
Tell her we're at Bloody Murphy's. <laughs> we are at. Let me let me get this right. And I I lean to Rollback and just go Bloody Murphy's. Oh, yeah, tell tell him Bloody Murphy's. Bloody, okay. Bloody Murphy's. We are at Bloody Murphy's. Bloody, Bloody Murphy's. I, I like that name. Bloody Murphy's. Bloody Murphy's. Right. Where is it? I mean, I can stagger around this whole station for hours, but you could just tell me where. Give me a hand here. Or maybe I could try and find some coordinates from you, though. Where, where'd you say it? Where'd you say it was at, Relatha? In the comments spire. Oh, it's in it's in the spire. What the spire? Are you sure? Because that's that's where Mrs. Queen lives. Yeah, I mean, I oh. yeah, she and uh, a lot of other people. Listen, we need to get in touch with these guys. So, all right, Roger that, Captain. Um, I'll make my way to the spire then. By the Force. God. Uh, yeah, and uh, as we uh, quit the call, I'll turn to Rollback and be like, well, um, at least one of us is going to have to go there. Keep an eye on Link. Link has partaken of the drink. No. Yes, I plan on going there to meet her, or to meet him. Who else is going to go? I think I'll go get set up, look into that thing we were talking about. <clears throat> I, I turn to mm, Ramba. <sighs> Maybe I should... Uh... Give Tin Man that memory wipe you said he needs. I don't care uh, much for drinking. Maybe maybe when I get back with him tonight. I need him right now, though, to translate. You are there with Tycho. I'll, uh, I'll turn and I'll look at Tin Man. What's, what's your opinion of it? Well, given that I'm going to have my memory wiped shortly, sir, I fail to see how my opinion has anything to do with it. Well, you heard his sass. I don't think he wants his uh, memory wiped tonight. As you wish. As you're sort of saying this, Tycho, you feel that there's be something like pulling at the back of your trouser legs. I turn around and look. Is it the droid? It is indeed the droid. It's reached out one of its appendages and it's just going. And tugging the back of your trouser legs. Okay. So I uh, I take a step away. It lowers its arm down to its side and then says, If you'll please come with me, sir. Ralbach, I'll be uh, I'll be with you shortly. Rulatha, excellent information, gentlemen. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'll follow the droid if if the droid is going to do anything uh, like lead me away. No, Link, or uh, uh, Tycho, me and Tim Man will be at Bloody Murphy's with Link if you want to meet us. Very good, very good. I'll, uh, if, if I don't meet you there, I'll call you. Okay, you follow this trundling droid. It leads you to one of the many elevators strewn throughout Quen Station. It rumbles into the elevator and swivels around, obviously waiting for you to get in after it. Mm -hmm. As you do, it reaches up with one of its sort of spindly appendages, presses a button, and the elevator starts going down. 
then it goes down a bit further then it goes down a bit further and judging on your sort of your guesstimation you think you must be heading into like the sort of the very sort of lower levels of the quen space station where the sort of power plants etc mm -hmm. are and as you emerge it's into a, a dimly lit sort of hissing labyrinth of corridors lined with wires cables pipes all manner of technology which seems to be studded into the walls some of it you recognize some of it looks very ancient and is of a, a design that's entirely alien to you but it all seems to have been seamlessly sort of fixed together in a way that you find almost difficult to comprehend how how someone could have fixed all of this technology together and the droid just quite happily trundles ahead of you down one of these corridors Yeah, I take a hesitant step after the droid. Pause. I the technology covered walls and roof for like half a minute for continuing. The, the and, droid sort um, of stops as you pause, turns its head three hundred and sixty degrees to look at you, and says, "If you'll please follow me, sir." Okay. Um, yeah, as I as I start to follow the droid again, uh, my hand goes to uh, where an imperial officer would keep a sidearm if I had actually taken a sidearm or the clothing uh, of an imperial officer, and I just like my hand just like twitches in air. As I hope that I really had something to defend myself with, which I don't. Okay, you're led for what seems to be sort of like an hour or so through these twisting corridors. You appear to be getting nearer to the center of the the station on this level. There is an ever-present hum of the power generators down here, since you're physically nearer to them than you are on the rest mm -hmm. of the station. And there's a sort of dim amber glow that pulsates on many of the the walls from this seemingly alien technology you're led into a large circular chamber and you can see on the floor of the chamber is what appears to be one of the largest hollow emitters you've ever seen and there's myriad cables and wires running from it seemingly into the walls and all of the circuitry that stood it into the very fabric of this place as you enter the room the the g2 maintenance droid it says have a nice day sir and it turns around and trundles back out of the door wait i need a, a guide back i don't it's a maze <laughs> i will wait for you outside sir and it trundles out yeah as you turn around from looking at you can see that the the hollow emitter studded into the floor has started to flicker a faint blue color then after a few moments what appears to be a flickering blue figure appears on the hollow emitter and it looks a little bit like that a strange sort of reptilian looking humanoid with a bulbous cranium it's the flickering blue of a hollow image it turns to look at you and says i am rack b6 but you may call me the builder and that ladies and gentlemen is where we end this evening's session with Tycho looking up at this strange flickering alien form in front of him so, starting to sweat <laughs> <laughs> so, thank you very much for playing guys as always i hope you enjoyed the session i'm happy to chat for a bit afterwards uh, just to thank my players again if you want to outro yourself feel free obviously we've got andrew playing ralback yeah to... thanks for the game guys especially you john really enjoyed it glad to hear it of course we have johannes playing Tycho. yeah thanks again for another great session looking forward to the next one and seeing where this mess goes <laughs> Um, how could we forget our violent homicidal Wookiee Ralatha? Who? Huh?
<laughs> I don't know what he's talking about. <laughs> nah, it was a great session. Uh, can't wait to till the next one. Thank you very much. And of course, last but not least, we have Jay playing your link. Yeah, um, thank you very much. It was really good fun and it was nice to have a bit of downtime, but also the super excitement with the droids. So yeah, that was really enjoyable. Thank you, John. Cool, cool. And thank you for everyone who is watching this and who voted on the early tide change during this game. I'm now going to end the broadcast, but as I say, I'm happy to chat for a bit with you guys afterwards and obviously dole out XP and stuff like that. So until we see you at the next session, take care. Happy 